Here we go. A firefly the size of a hummingbird flits past as the soft cry of a viola drifts through the air. A mountaintop pokes up through the forest, its snow-covered peak piercing the violet-tinted clouds above. Rays of sunlight filter down through the pollen-filled air, casting rainbow shadows across the vibrant green grass. The smell of morning dew, even as the sun sets behind the horizon, is a never-failing odor. And you see, falling from the sky, like raindrops, leaves. So you're just about to fight Achilles. He is transformed into this giant serpent, and then all of a sudden, everything is black. And it smells mildly... No, no, you know, maybe, maybe you're dead. Everything smells mildly smoky, and you don't quite know what's going on. This is where someone makes a perception check. This might be where someone makes a perception check. <laughs> hey, uh, that, that is pretty good. So Mav begins to look around, and it does look like there is a little seam of light cutting through the smoke. Oh, look at that. Nat 20 for a perception check, right? Let's start here. Um, seems like there's a little, little light about six feet away from you. Bobek's going to run for it. Okay. Um, you get to it. Uh, you, you stumble over a couple of things on the way. It feels like maybe soft things. Bedrolls, blankets, you're not, you're not quite sure. Um, and you throw open what you find to be the flap of a tent. And on the other side of that tent is a village. Except the villagers are not like anything you have ever seen before in your lives. There are rabbits in petticoats walking around, and others are wearing vests. There's um, a bear, uh, looks like he's working a loom, and a couple of elk and deer, looks like they're shucking corn, maybe doing some other stuff. They all stop and look at you, and they start to applaud. I reiterate, I blame Phil. <laughs> yeah. Um... I will. I will also start to applaud. I don't know why, but I. Just... <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. All right. Um. So as you're applauding and looking around, um, they applaud louder back, and suddenly, like coming out of the trees, is just a massive being. He's seven. Feet tall. No, he stands up straight. It looks like he was ducking under some branches. He's nine, maybe ten feet tall. Huge antlers sticking out to the side. He's covered in ragged furs and leathers. And he smiles as he sees you. And he walks up to you and he says, Oh, hey, welcome welcome to the village. My name is Randy. And I'm a moose. <laughs> Hi, Randy. I'm a dwarf. I'm right a on. Right on. Randy. Yeah. Where are we? Oh! Um, well, this is going to be a little hard to explain, so hang with me. In the not-too-distant future, Future U's signed a contract, and he just passes it to Mav. He passes a huge scroll straight to Mav. Um, you told me you wouldn't believe that you signed this contract, so to give this to you immediately. And, uh, and you, you signed up to be on kind of a game show. Says Mav. <laughs> Mav starts reading the contract. Um, <laughs> as far as you can tell, it is it is perfectly worded and completely legal. Uh, you have signed your next few days away to a company known as S X N R Productions. I'm trying to remember. We knew about Randy from the game show, from the right, the Beholder. The yeah, Beholder television you guys have seen this show. You know this show. You watched episodes okay. of this show. 
And now you're on it. <laughs> Alright, I'll be excited. Okay. That's it. That's good. That's good. You're excited. Do you guys know how the game works? No. I mean, I, I mean my character would, but I don't. Um, so... Uh, there is music playing in the background. There is music playing in the background. No, there's no music. Tell them there's no music. <laughs> I hate you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that might be one of the things that I was trying to do that broke everything, but I don't see how, because I was doing it all on a different computer, but it just feels like it. Anyway, um, so we've taken all your stuff, and as he says that, all of your stuff disappears. You are now standing in your underwear, in your small yeah, clothes. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> yep, we've taken it all, and uh, we have spread it around the Feywild. And so as you move from challenge, and he does the quotes thing, <laughs> to challenge, you'll be able to pick a piece of your gear back if and when you are successful. If you are unsuccessful, we take all your stuff that you were successful with, put it back in the box, and you got to start over. That really sucks. We had one guy who was stuck here for like 400 years trying to get out. <laughs> we didn't air that episode. The big man thought it was going to be too long. <laughs> well, at least he got some good content for a while. Yeah, he just started throwing himself off cliffs. It wasn't a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> who was that? I don't know, his name was Bill or something. He couldn't even remember his own name by the end. And oh, no. Yeah, it was really <laughs> unfortunate. Oh, man. Right. Audio recordings are great. <laughs> so, uh, you got no other questions? Everybody else is always like, Randy, what the heck am I doing here? Why'd you take my stuff? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so obviously we signed a contract, but explain the game to us. So we took all your things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we hit them around yeah. the Feywild. Am I going slow there. enough for you? You forgot to speak up when you were speaking slowly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he gets real loud. It's like, I didn't know dwarves couldn't hear good, too. Must be. You gotta show. So, it's, it's the war golf. He explains yeah. the game to you that throughout the Feywild, there are dozens and dozens of challenges, and you're being recorded. And as he explains to you that you're being recorded, several small, one eyed blobs of flesh that have little eye stalks floating around, float around you, and you see them aiming their eye stalks at you, and a beam kind of scans you up and down, and then once they get a good visual of you, they disappear. Randy informs you that these little guys will follow you everywhere. They are your camera crew. Um, okay. They're recording everything that you do. When you complete a challenge, the rabbits will deliver to you a box. You will open up that box and see all your stuff, but as soon as you pick one item out of it, the rest of the stuff will disappear. Other than that, there aren't a lot of rules. He does tell you, you don't have to kill everything. <laughs> Some people do, and I guess that's okay. But you don't you don't have to. But do we get to? Sure. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we start? Just pick a random direction. Right here. And he points to the right off, off to the west of the or the east of the village. He's like, We're working on season two, it's to the west, but it's not quite done yet. You could go there, but you'd probably actually really die. Oh, let's not really die. <laughs> yeah, that would be really bad. So, oh hey, and by the way, and he puts his hands together and then he spreads them out, and a really cool looking spear shows up. It's, it looks like it's made of a petrified vine and has this like glowing, silvery, steely-looking head on the end of it. And he says, um, this is for you if you win. And then he closes his hand and opens it up again, and then it's, it's a giant war hammer. 
And then he closes it again, and it's a staff. He's like, this sucker's really awesome if you beat today's challenges. And it's for you. And he just keeps doing that, and it's different weapons every time he opens it up. Okay. Yeah. So, you ready to go? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. And as you, you say, yeah, you're ready to go, you hear somebody yelling yay and clapping from the bushes, and there is a camel there. And he's just sticking his head out of the bushes, and he's clapping super excitedly, and he's like, good luck, guys! <laughs> Thanks. What, what's his name? Camel. His name is Bob. Bob the camel. Sorry. All right. So you guys head to the east. Oops. And shortly. Did you say don't go east. No. Don't go west. Where's... Oh. West is okay. west is bad. East Season is two. east is okay. Yeah. Season two is west. <laughs> so. Do the bonus prize for passing season two. <laughs> I I mean you can, but the bonus prize of it it might take your damn a really long time to put the encounters together. Because <laughs> I don't have them built yet. So you guys head um, down the path. What what? Um, my spell slots are reset for some reason, but I know I use them. They should be. You guys actually should have a long rest. You will. Okay. You will start the but game. You have no spell focus. For materials. Well, I was thinking about it more from the fact that I, for some reason, I had damage, but I had all my spell slots returned. No, I, I just rested you again just in case. Okay, cool. Because you should. So, you head down the path, and you see it continues to the northwest, it looks like it, or east, it bends around, and it also continues to the south. To the south looks kind of swampy and dingy. To the east looks like just more forest. Um, what were the directions again? You said what? East and south. South is dingy. East is more forest. And the path looks pretty. Path is pretty I'm sorry. Path looks pretty clear to the east. It looks like that's the way most people leave the village here. Well, let's go south. <laughs> Gonna go south then. I mean, everybody goes east. Okay. I've seen that episode. You have seen okay. that. Well, you've seen enough episodes to know that um, if you, uh, nothing's ever the same, basically, is what happens. So, if you were to go east, it wouldn't be the same, but it looks like maybe the animals from the village go uh, to the east more often than the others, than normal folk do. So south then? I'm up for a challenge. Right. Yes, to the south. Ugh. To the south. So it turns less travel and it made all the difference. So it turns into a swampy area really quick and there's a cave up ahead and you see a sign outside of this cave. Oh shoot, I'm explore I'm showing this map to myself. <laughs> this would probably make a whole lot more sense if you were looking at the map. I just I just looked at my AC without my splint mail on. Yikes. <laughs> it's no good. Oh, yeah, it's oh, oh wait, it's the same. Nice. Um, hey Mike, I have a question. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. Can you I... answer to this? I guess maybe let me see. Mm-hmm. While well, I'm wearing armor, okay. Okay. Never mind, I got the answer. Cool. So, you guys see a cave up ahead. And it looks like there's a big wooden sign out front. Uh, I want to see what the sign says. Uh, do you read Sylvan? No. Does anybody in the party read Sylvan? I don't think so. Let me check. Oops. Or Elf. No. Yes. Ah. Oh, wait a minute. I Oh, I can't cast a spell. I couldn't. Yeah, never mind. 
Go for it. Some spells right you can cast without material components, but not many. Um, so, but you read Elvish? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, you can't quite put it together, but they're a similar language structure. Um, you can kind of make out the concepts that whatever this sign is saying, it's telling you there's evil ahead. It's a warning of some kind. I'll convey that to the group. Hey, so we, Oleg's gonna tell you, like, they, there's evil ahead, but I'm not sure that we should go in there without anything. <laughs> yeah. Well. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, yeah. What do you guys wanna do? And I guess we could proceed like really cautiously until we maybe get a glimpse of like what's in here to see if we can even handle it or not, but that could also be a bad idea later. I'm just gonna start walking forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is probably a bad idea, guys. Let's go. Alright. Well let me share the next map with you. So you head into this cave. <laughs> Alt, not even regular evil. Yeah, it's, no, ultimate. <laughs> but the is more Man, it. Mike, just at some point in the future, can you make a map that's the cabin of regular evil? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we we can we can work on that. So, you guys, the tunnel bends around a little bit, and then you start to make out what looks what looks like maybe a little bit of light up ahead. Yeah. Make stealth checks for me. You fighters don't have to do it at disadvantage right now. Yep, it'll it got at least that. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anyway. You can choose whichever one you want. <laughs> so you come to a bit of a. <laughs> Jeez, you Looking back where the guys are yelling at each other for not having their roll of steel. It's like you're stepping on sharp rocks and you don't feel like you should be hurt by them because you're dwarves and so you just keep marching forward, but they really actually do hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. It's kinda like walking across a bed of Legos. <laughs> so you guys get to a bit of a crossroads. It looks like there's a bone gate to the northeast and the tunnel continues on to the southwest. Which way, guys? Keep going. If no one says anything, I'll just pick a random direction. Andy said keep going. <laughs> that direction. <laughs> what is that? Is it a it's a gate eight? made of bones. Then roll a one. Is it, is it open? Um, <laughs> it, is, it is locked. <laughs> it's locked. Yep. Um, oh my gosh. Doomed. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, well, I guess we just... Would I, would I be able to, since I don't have my like tinkering tools with me, but would I be able to, with my knowledge of that, would I, would I be able to just see how difficult of a lock it is? You guys watch as Thanic walks up to the lock and puts his finger in it. <laughs> yeah. He looks back at you all and says... It's locked. Yeah. My key finger doesn't work today. Oh my god. It looks like it's a pretty complex lock. Alright, well, then let's go the other way then. Okay. So, look, you're gonna tear off a piece of, like, your loincloth and try to pick it. <laughs> so, it quickly opens up into a small room. Um, and in the center of this room is a pile of bodies. All sorts of different bodies. Bones and 
like skulls and or... what's not. Yeah, all sorts of different stuff. So they're all in various states of decay. Um, they Are don't. Including monsters. Yep. Okay. There's orcsies and kobolds and all sorts they of stuff. Have crude gear. <laughs> no, they none of them have gear at all. They're all in. They're all in their skivvies like us. They're all in their skivvies. Are there really any? Are there any bones that are like in, in well enough shape to at least use as like a club? Um, make a perception check as you. You'll have to dig through the pile a little bit. Can I? Can I do an investigation instead? Sure. Okay. Yeah, just got it this time. That's percent. That's actually a six, or so it's a nineteen. Okay. Um, so, Othig wants nothing to do with digging around in this pile. He's just kind of kicking at it off to the side. And as you guys all start to monkey with the pile, you realize it's illusionary. It doesn't have any smell to it or anything. None of these bodies are real. And as you're kicking at it, a skull pops up out of the pile, and it begins to look around at you all. And it's it tips its head to the side, and it's like, what are you doing here? Can I, can I put my head, put my head, can I put my finger through its head to see if it's illusionary? Um, Just like poke it. You, you, you go to poke the bone and it's solid. And it, as soon as you touch it, it, it zooms back from you and it's like, do it again and I will explode you. And it like lights up on green, with green fire, like shooting out of its eyes and out of its neck hole. And it just starts oh. to cackle and laugh. Can I absorb a spire? <laughs> um, it's not a spell. It is a magical effect, I so I I don't know. We need to figure that out if you can absorb magical effects. You should be able to. Do you wanna do you, wanna, you wanna Sorry, absorb his magical there. effect? Do I want to? Yeah. I don't think I want to. Well, you don't know what how powerful it is, that's for sure. Not with a nine. I'm just going to hold off for now. All right, sounds good. Um, it asks you again, what are you doing here? We're on a game show. Ah, Naked in the Fae. My <laughs> favorite. <laughs> so, I suppose you want to beat the challenge ahead then. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Yeah. And he says, follow me! And it shoots off down the hallway towards the gate. Alright, I'll follow it. Okay. Alright, so it's waiting for you at the gate. And it's facing the gate. And as you approach it, like, turns around super fast. Like, you barely even see it turn. And all of a sudden it's looking at you and it's like, Are you sure you want to go in? This is the cavern of ultimate evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But... You don't even have any weapons. We're 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 dwarfs. We are weapons. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. So it it hovers down over towards the lock, and you watch as its teeth kind of fall out of its face, but they don't fall to the ground. They kind of roll out and across where its lip would be. They form a key with its teeth, and it plugs into the into the socket, and then it flips upside down, and it and. It, and you hear it say, I stuck. Get a little crashed. I'll, I'll twist it, I guess. <laughs> so you give him a little twist, and the gate clicks open. Uh, I guess we go through. Is he going through, or? But we make sure uh, Mav goes first, because he's not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time. What are we doing? <laughs> uh, we're going in. <laughs> what is Mav not doing for? Mav is uh, not staying behind. So Mav is walking through the door. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely perfect. So as you guys go around, go through the gate, it you see it drops down to a to a ledge, and down below you there is a pile of skulls down there. And the head turns and looks at you and he goes, Those are real. <laughs> and there's a door to your north. The light is coming from the south. 
The ledge continues around. It also looks like you can scramble scramble down it here too pretty easily. Um, I'll ask him if the what, what's on the other side of the door. Like, where's this coming? I don't. I don't even know. I've been in that other pile for so long, waiting for somebody to come. I don't even remember, remember there being a door. Fairly certain there are no traps. I'll open it. Okay. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell everybody to back up just in case. Okay. So you open up the door to check for traps, and a huge gust of wind hits you in the face, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as you try to keep your balance as this wind is threatening to blow you over. Ooh, you do. It pushes you back to the edge of the of the uh, drop off, but you manage to hold your ground. And nobody else was in that, right? Yep, nope, correct. Everybody else was off to the side. Meanwhile, I was thinking of man were off to the side laughing at <laughs> Is the wind still blowing, or was it like a one-time thing? It seems to be a one-time thing. It is stopped blowing. Okay. So it opens yeah. up into a chiseled-out chamber of some kind. There's a table in there with an area rug, a stove, some cabinets, some desks. Covered in papers. Ooh, what kind of papers? What does it say? What are they? Can any of you read Draconic? I can, yeah. Um, these are papers and plans and sketches to build the ultimate evil. Ooh. <laughs> There's also a, a tunnel leading to the east as well. If the ultimate evil is used for a good purpose. It's evil. But do the ends justify the means? No. No. That's Static is going to bring about the bone grinder. <laughs> that's that's how you get um, not the Dark Lord, but a queen. Treacherous is the sea. Yeah, but I didn't read that book. All will love her and despair. Well, what is it? You? Like, is it is it a device? Is it a spell? Is it... You don't know. It's got something to do with necromancy. There's there's all these pictures of bones, and there's a lot of times it'll be like a picture of a bone, like you draw as a kid when you're put, like making that stereotypical dog bone, and then there'll be an arrow to the bone, and then the word bone. <laughs> it's It's plans like that. Is there anything else in this room? Um, there's a stove and the bench and the table. A, a stove? Yep, there's a stove. We should burn these plans. Well, is, this, is the skull guy still with us? Yeah, he's hanging out. Can I ask him his name? Um, his name is Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Would... Who, who lives here? Who wrote this? Whose table is this? He didn't even know there was a door here. He says, I, I don't I don't know. I've been in the illusion pile for so long waiting for somebody to come. Nobody ever comes this way. If we if we take one of these chairs and break it apart, can we use one of the, the like the chair legs as clubs? Yes you can. It is an improvised weapon, but you can add um, a D four Minus two to uh, to your damage. So you can add two extra damage to your punches, basically. Okay. Okay. It's for me. All right, so you start smashing up furniture, and Jeffrey's getting excited. He's like, yeah, break it, break it! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot like Venus. <laughs> Is there any other... Is that an exit to the east? That is an exit to the east. Um, I want to burn those plants. All right. I don't think it's burning them. So you open up the stove, and there's a pie in there. Well, can I, I, burn the pie. Don't eat the pie. 
But what if it's a good pie? It's never a good pie. Who leaves a good pie in the stove? It's a pie in the cave of ultimate evil. Come on. <laughs> Just light that up. They have this thing like the fire on the wall. No, stop. What is more evil than burning a perfectly good pie? Evil pie. No, no. <laughs> I hope you have a third this pie. If you're, burning, if you're burning an evil pie, that's good. If you're burning a good pie, that's evil. But, but, so but, but, I'm not but, burning it. Matt wants to burn the pie. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, don't eat it. Because it's probably evil. Because it's in the cave of ultimate evil. <laughs> 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 it's definitely an evil pie. There's no such thing as an evil pie. Oh! Um, well, that's what the head would like you to think. That wasn't a pie. That was... Cake. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were pastries, so they yeah. Were, see, they, were, they she actually she called them dream pies if I remember right. Yeah, um, yeah, but a cheesecake isn't a pie. I mean, a cheesecake isn't a cake. That's Just true. Just because it says pie in the title doesn't mean it's a pie. That's true. It's called. Um, well, it doesn't mean this is pie either. <laughs> it should be the title. <laughs> I uh, I forgot to tell you guys um, one of the rules to the game in order to win is you have to get out of the Fey Wild too. You beat challenges until you get out. So you're ser- you're also searching for a way out. Is it in the pie? You implied that when you said what's his name was stuck there for four hundred years. Okay. So that works. I'm okay with that. Cool. Um, okay. I'll ask Jeffrey, what is the actual challenge here? Like, is what's what's the challenge? Because we got sidetracked already. We've been following you for 30 seconds and we got sidetracked. You're the one who went in the door. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying what's the actual what's the actual uh, challenge? Well, I, I'm the key stall. That's my job. I don't know much more than that. My guess is... You defeat the ultimate evil? If Mav starts to burn that pie, that means Mav's the ultimate evil. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what, win, really? <laughs> what's going on with this pie? There's a pie in the oven. Othig's got hands full of papers. He's just ready to shove them in there. What kind, what kind of pie is it? I'm just setting this pie on the top of the stove, putting the papers in. <laughs> Okay, it looks like it's a meat pie. Oh man! Oh, a little meat pie. That was to pull the meat pie out and give it to Thanos. <laughs> oh my god! Are you gonna eat the meat pie of ultimate <laughs> evil? Dirty force around here. It is not warm. Okay, then I'm gonna put it down because that's gross. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, <laughs> oh, think you're gonna burn all the plans then? Oh yeah. Yeah, they go up. They they burn. They burn good. Ash everywhere. Yes. Smoke, fire. Evil now. Yeah. Sweet. Let's check out what's to the east. Yeah. Okay. There is a bedroom to the east. There is a dead man in black robes laying on the bed. He has been here a long time. Looks like he's been here long enough for his skin to kind of mummify. I'm going to look around his bed. Um, you find a note that says, Don't trust the dragon. I, I would inform the team that we are not supposed to trust the dragon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a Vizini and just be like, who's, who's like, so are we supposed to trust this guy? Maybe the dragon's good. Well, my thought was, what if this guy was the dragon? But then we can't trust him? Maybe we should hide his face. Why would he write a note that says, don't trust me? 
<laughs> so if he said don't trust the dragon, he wrote the note, and he's telling you not to trust them. Should you not trust the fact that he told you not to trust them? Oh, is this one of those things where, like, uh, I'm a liar? Yeah. <laughs> the closer you are to danger, the further you are from harm. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Where did you find that note? Where was it? Was it, it was on, by the body. It was by the body on the bed. Can I, with my massive intelligence, can I <laughs> carbon date the body compared to the note? <laughs> no. <laughs> make a make a medicine check at disadvantage. <laughs> and and I imagine you're gonna do this with your finger again. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no. Pretty sure I know. <laughs> you yeah. are gonna do it with your finger. <laughs> you look at him and you're like, they've been here a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've been here together for so long that they are indistinguishable. <laughs> <laughs> Like, is he like a skeleton? Or not, he's not skeleton, but he's like, he's like... Oh yeah, my. his, his like, flesh is all pulled tight. He's totally dried out. Okay. He needs a meat pie. I guess I'm just wondering if he was... Like, did he die here? Or, or was he placed here after death? <laughs> I don't think you're figuring I just, that out. Here's, here's the question that I'm asking. Like, how, like, the pie clearly wasn't here as long as he was. You know what I mean? Like, the pie was cold, but it wasn't... Like, kind of fungus growing on it? Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't holding. <laughs> um, I mean, for all we know, that could have, like, just happened. Like, it could have just instantaneously taken effect and he became a mouth pie. Uh, on a scale of one to the mummy, how old is this mummy? How old is the pie? One. <laughs> the pie is one. Um, can I cast detect magic? You sure can. No, it, it, nope. doesn't any, um, it doesn't need any. It doesn't need any materials. Yes, it does. It requires your ritual book, which you would have. It, oh, that's true. That's and true. it also yeah. requires, I think, a, a gold bar. Like a, a flat no, gold bar. Components are verbal and smack. Um, identify. identify. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of identify. You're right. Yeah, a uh, pearl worth 100 gold. Yep. Uh, you can blow so a spell guess, slot to do it if it's only yeah. verbal and somatic. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, there is no magic coming from this room, but there is a faint glow coming back from the other room of transmutation magic. Okay. Oh, please be the pie. Oh, yes. Please be the pie. Yeah, let's go on that. Let's go. Let me, let me follow the okay. scent of the, transmutation. Pie. The oven is glowing transmutation. Um, make perception checks for me. <laughs> Did Othin just transform the plant into the oven? Ultimate evil in pie. Um, Othig and Mav are so obsessed with this glowing oven that after Thanak tells them that the oven's magical, they don't notice that the pie is gone. What? <laughs> yep. Thanak notices because he's still thinking about eating it. Yeah. <laughs> pie is missing. Pie is missing. So who stole my pie? The, so the, the oven is transmutation. Yep. Can you, um, off the top of your head, what else, what other, what other spells are transmutation other than the obvious changing one thing from another? Um. Like, does that make sense to the question I'm asking you? Yeah, and to tell you the truth, I don't quite know. Okay. Like, to, to list exactly which spells are transmutation and not. Yeah. 
Keep talking. I'll see if I can find like a, a list. Just a quick. I know I have a list. Though. Sure. What do you guys want to do? You guys have, yeah. Um, I'm going to put one of the chair legs in the oven. You open up the oven door and there is a fresh steaming pie in it. Huh. <laughs> is it a meat pie? It is a, indeed a meat pie. I'm uh, totally putting the other chair leg in this thing and turning on the oven. I'm taking that meat pie out, putting it on top, putting a chair leg in, turning on the oven. Okay. Make perception checks for me. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so happy. You're all watching the oven and you don't notice that the pie you just took out has disappeared. It all of a sudden... <laughs> All of a sudden, you turn around, and you look, and there's no pie. And you're like, "Where did it go?" Opening up the oven. There is a fresh meat pie in the oven. What about the okay. chair leg? Okay, there, wait a minute. The chair leg is gone. Do we have anything edible around us? We have. I mean, pie. you have underwear. Yeah. Um. <laughs> You know what? I'm not worried. Grab a, can I grab a, just like a, a, a chunk of wood or something from the table or a chair? Throw that in the in the oven. Or no, no, no. The, 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 the pie was made from wood, right? Yeah, yeah I just did that. I'm going to take a bite out of it. I'm You're going to eat the pie? I'm not going to eat it, the whole thing, but I'm going to take a bite out of it. Okay. And then, and then, and then I want somebody to put another piece, another, uh, bake another pie for me. Okay. Okay. Like while, um, while I'm eating it, this is nice to have Make a constitution saving throw as you take a bite of this pie. It's <laughs> real good. It's it real, good. real good. This pie, it... Elk? Caribou? You're, you're not sure. It's exotic. It's wonderful. It's so good. And somebody else is throwing another piece of furniture in the, in the stove. Are you leaving the pie in there or are you taking it out? I leave it in there. The one that I'm eating? The one that I'm eating? Or yeah, the, next one? the one you're eating. The one that I'm eating, I took it out. Okay. All right, that pie is out. Make perception checks for me. Uh, while we're watching the pie and the stove. Yep. I mean, can I get advantage on it because I have the pie in my hand while yes. I'm eating it? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Really? oh. oh okay. Oh. So you guys watch as... As you feed the fire in the stove, the pie in Thanok's hand slowly disappears. What about the pie that I'm currently chewing on? Does that disappear as well? No, it doesn't feel like it did. Well, I mean, you swallowed it. You ate your bite. Yeah. But, like, the whatever residual was still in my mouth. No, it still no, it still tastes like there was pie in your mouth. Can we cook with the pie still in there? Mm, yeah, you, you probably have enough for two or three more pies worth of furniture you've smashed up. <laughs> we have the whole room next door. That's true, you do. We <laughs> throw up the dead body in there. It's so gross. <laughs> I mean, it's not him. I didn't eat wood. <laughs> That's so gross. What do you want to do? Throwing a piece of wood in with the pie. So we open up the oven, and the pie is back, and it's fully repied. There's no bite missing out of it. Yeah. Okay. Can I, after having eaten this... <laughs> you feel different? Well, here's the thing. I passed the, I, I, I pass the, um, the, the save, so I'm assuming there won't be any effect. But mm. I'm going to remember back to what Randy said about this guy being there and forgetting who he was yeah can i do like do, do i remember things do i still yeah. remember everything absolutely as far as you remember at yeah, least you don't remember what you forgot yeah so i feel, I feel safe with that answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um pie <laughs> this is gonna 
to kill me, but I'll eat the pie. <laughs> Alright, please make a constitution saving throw as you begin to eat and the I, pie. And I will tell everybody that it's delicious. You get about halfway through it, and um, you two, Othig and Mav, you watch as Thanok, um, as, once he starts eating, he, he continues to eat faster and faster. And then all of a sudden you watch as his hand transforms into a mouth. And he just shoves it in the pie. And then all of a sudden, eyeballs start to appear on him all over the place. And he just starts to transform. And he transforms into this. <laughs> I'm so glad you ate this pie. I can't believe you ate the pie. Why did you eat the pie? Because I have a wisdom of eight. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> then I uh, currently, um, you can still talk. <laughs> you am can... I, like, fully that, or am I in the middle of, like, mid-shift? It, it happens very quickly. You become the gibbering mouther very, very quickly as you transform into this sludge pile. And now you are just kind of slurping around, around on the floor, and Jeffrey's like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Do I still have, like, my mental faculties? Yep. Yeah, like, is he, is he, you are still Thanok? You are still Thanok, you just look like that thing. Actually, I'm thinking I would attack you. Um, what? What did you say? Like, what? Are you, like, announcing that you're still in control of yourself and you're still you because otherwise I'm, like, attacking? Do I know I look like this thing? Yeah, you watched your hand become a long Dude. meat pipe with a mouth on the end of it. I mean, my point is that there's no mirrors. I can't, you know what I mean? Like, you, I'm, I'm, Well, you definitely know you don't look like you used to because a man can look down and see his body. You look down and see mouths and more eyeballs. Yeah. I thought this was, like, video game first person where you look down and just... <laughs> No, you can also see in multiple directions that you've never been able to before. Yep. Oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, obviously I'd be like, what happened to me? Yeah! <laughs> so are you doing that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, I'll run over and open. <laughs> I'm punching him. I'm punching him. I'm punching him right now. That's fine. And then I'll laugh super hard. In any of your faces. I'll laugh it with all of my mouths. Oh my god. This is such a nightmare. Well, well, well yeah, on the plus side, you may not turn into a fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be a gibbering uh, Kuatoa? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's got a hit, right? Yeah. I mean, what is it? 13? Yeah. Does my AC change at all? No, it's still 10. So, so yeah, you guys start duking it out. He's... he's no, not duking it out. Just one. Just one. <laughs> I'm just punching him once. That's all it. Right. Yeah. So, what so? is it? What's, what's your uh, strength? So, it's 2 plus what? <laughs> plus 4? So, 6? Yep. I'm adding them, right? Uh, yeah, I gotta roll my D4, though, I guess. Or wait. That's fine. Is six is good. Yeah. Oh, it's six. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to do now? I want to say I told you so. I don't think it's just going to shake his head and continue to the south. <laughs> um, okay. So let me continue on to the next area. Yep, you yep. can. Actually, other do you want to eat a pie? No, I didn't want to eat a pie in the first place. I'll hand, I'll hand what's ever left over to him and be like, it's really good. I'm gonna hit you in the face with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you ate the pie. Effective seed go up now that you like are a monster Should. and have like a serious like. <laughs> so. Um, as you move further south into the cave, you begin to see a large glowing altar that looks like it's covered in blood. Let's sacrifice the giver and the monster. 
That's funny because I was going to say, is it a place to sacrifice a pie? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe something that ate a pie. <laughs> Alright, I'll go check out the altar. Make a perception check. It doesn't look like it's covered in blood. As you get closer, it's too red. Covered in meat sauce. It's covered in mother and giver. They're giving mother. (laughs) (laughs) Ryan, focus. What is on the altar? Um... Make a second perception check at advantage. Now that you know it's not blood. Uh, 15. (laughs) As weird as it is, you think it might be jelly. Do I make jelly? No, (laughs) you make slime. Quick, Ophic, squeeze me. (laughs) Does jelly come out? Did anything come out when I punched him last? He's real slimy and gooey. (laughs) It's kind of like punching a slurping zit with mouths and eyes. It's gross. I will will refer to that instance. What color is it? It's zit colored. Interior pus like yellow. Uh, Not the same color as the yellow. Oh, the jelly? Yeah. It's red. It looks. It looked like blood from a distance. You got close and it's jelly. That was what I meant. Like the stuff that comes out of me is not the same color. Correct. <laughs> make everybody make perception checks for me, Adam. You can make this at advantage. Yes. Because you can see in multiple directions. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I'm still pretty terrible. <laughs> still pretty terrible. None of you notice this, but something has begun to happen behind you. And then you hear laughing. Sounds like Jeffrey is laughing at you. And he yells, you fools, you fell for all of my tricks. And two skeletons form up out of the bone pile at the other end of the room and have run closer to you. And they're going to attack and you need to roll initiative. (laughs) I don't do skeletons. Is that too loud? Is what too loud? The music that you're not hearing. <laughs> Alright. The skull falls away and there is a small dragon inside of it. Don't trust the dragon! And he says you should have listened to the old man. is cackling at you. Alright, and they... Your initiatives suck. (laughs) Your skeleton's initiatives were, like, impossible to beat anyway. We think we have better ones. Alright. Let's see. Let's put Othig... Let's put Slurpy Pants Danok. I still would be going for it. <laughs> Is that kind of negative? Nobody's experienced. No way, no positive one. Yeah, I'm working on it. Alright. So, skeleton. One is going to zip over to here. And two is going to go over here. Let's just, let's just put you guys in my, squares. My stick? Like, what's my attacks? It is now just back to your strength. You you can okay. reach out and pseudo pseudopod somebody, or reach out a mouth and bite them. They okay. do the same damage, but whatever you want to do. And let's okay. see. So the skeletons are going to get two attacks. One against Slurpy Fanok, and that's a 17. That's going to hit, and the other one against Othig. 
And does 12 hit you, Othic? Yes. Okay. Thanok, you take 4 damage. Othic, you take 5 damage. And then Jeffrey, the fairy dragon, um, is going to cast... I'm going to absorb it. <laughs> okay. Make... I will make my constitution saving throw. What level spell am I absorbing? He is casting a third level spell. Okay. At least I think Wait. it's third level. Wait. Wait. Fourth level. Why? Do you... Can I cast Funnel on first? Yes, you can. It's a fourth level spell, by the way. Does he get a saving throw against Muddle? How did we? How does that work? I, I was actually just thinking that. I don't think there is. Uh, I mean, there's, I feel like there should be. Yeah, there, there definitely should be. Um, so what what, what do you think would make sense? Concentration? Uh, yeah, because it's concentration for the spell. Yeah. Um, he's going to make it. He's got an 18 on the dice for his oh, check okay. against Muddle. And then he's got a 19 on the dice against absorbing the spell. And now I need Mav to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. You guys watch as Mav turns into a, like, it looks like he starts to shrink down into a mouse, and then he pops back up into Mav form. He almost got polymorphed into a mouse, and Jeffrey's like, dang it! (laughs) And it is now Thanox's turn. Uh, I guess I'll and I'll do a, I don't, um, none of these are, do I have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Do I have proficiency with these attacks? Yes, you are proficient with your pseudopods. Okay. So I'll do so I can do that. Not sure what so. Yeah. And you miss. Miss, and, Ooh, I miss. and you critically miss. Miss, 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 miss. miss, miss. Uh, roll, uh, roll, uh, roll, 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 D20, please. That's okay. So, you critically miss, but you do recover. Othig. I'm, I'm gonna hurt all your mouths. No, I never have. I've never attacked with my mouths in pseudopods before. That should hit him. Yay. I feel like I probably yep. sat that out of my back. What are, we, what are we rolling? A D4, then? Yeah, D4, have it. So if you roll a 4, you get 2, and then add your strength. Okay. Yeah, the only way to get 2 damage is if you roll a 4. Okay. Boom, there it is. There's the 4. skeleton one. That's my turn. Actually, I'm going to move right there. And your strength bonus is? Four. So it's eight total damage, then. No, it's only six. No, it's six. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Thank you. You smash into that skeleton for six damage. Mav! Um, well, Mav is going to turn around this way. And I suppose he's just gonna slap at the thing with a stick. I feel like both Map and I moved to protect you, and then you just were like, nope. <laughs> Alright, that's not gonna hit. I mean, I was saying that. And then he's in. <laughs> Alright, back to our skelly bros. That one is going to hit Thanok, and that one is going to hit Othig. Four damage to Thanok, and six damage to Othig. Jeffrey's up. Dear Jeffrey, what are you doing this time? Jeffrey is going to cast another spell. Are you muddling? Uh, you know, yeah, sure, let's try it again. Okay, I will roll two saving throws then. He will fail both of those. Okay, cool. Um, so, so what is, 
he looks at at Mav and he and he yells, "I suggest you leave!" And you watch as his words and the magic from his words just kind of spin around and suck right into Mav. You have. And you had said you had said if I muddle something and he sucks it up, he doesn't explode. Okay. No, I don't want that. I want to explode. <laughs> then don't muddle it. <laughs> Too late now. No, it's fine. You had said you had said there was a there was a synergy, so I wanted to try it out. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was that it didn't like have the negative effects of the absorption. I forgot that it was the op. Yeah, you no, he you you can you can over your limit. You cannot pop. Alright. Okay. Thanok, you're up. Oh, you hit him. I hit him. Um, nice. Hey, look at that. Someone's hey, five damage. Which one did you hit? Two, two? Two, yeah. Five damage. And your second attack? Second attack is... A miss. Yeah. Oh, thing. Sweet. That's a miss. <laughs> Did you say no? Yeah, that's a miss. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, what's it? Do you get two yeah. attacks? Oh, I didn't take my second attack last time. Oh. Oh. Well, you get two attacks. Oh, yeah. yeah, you do. Okay, well, I should definitely attack it. No, well, <laughs> Or not. It's a, it doesn't matter so much. All right, Mav, it's your turn. <laughs> Does Mav have an energy consisting within his body right? Yeah, he, you absorbed a second level spell, so if you were at max spell slots, you're over. Alright, I will make the attack of opportunity. Attack opportunity. Make sure we're coming this way. Um, and we're going to drive by, attempt to hit number one. <laughs> drive by. Nope. No? Okay. You're, getting, you're close. You're real close. And then... What level spell did I have? A two. Let me just check that. I'm pretty sure that's the second level spell. Suggestion. Yep, level two. So you explode and just blast Jeffrey and the skeleton. He he screams and he falls to the ground and he's like, No, you can't kill the ultimate evil. I'll get you, yeah. And he's gone. But the skeleton is still up and it is going to attack. And it will miss. Thanok, you're up. Right there. Gibbering Bear Mantle, you're up. <laughs> um, yeah. Dear Gibbering Bear Mantle, you do realize, and this is inside of your movement, but you're moving quite a bit slower. Oh. So. <laughs> you're slurping around at about half pace. Oh. <laughs> oh, our pace is already slow because we have. Uh, Ryan, you and I, we had magical stuff that was increasing. Oh, course. yeah. So we just gotta remind I that. am not moving slower. Because he's mobile. I have, I have mobile. What does that, what does that do? Gives him uh, an extra have, 10 feet of movement. Yeah, I have Oh, okay. Feet. So All what right. did the shoes give to you? Another five. Oh, oh his boots forward. let him jump. That's what it does. Oh, that's right. Okay, so oh, I wait. No, no, no. No, I would have 30 still, because I would have had, uh... Oh, whatever, it's fine. Figure it out. Uh, two to five, what is that? Four damage? Ten. And then yeah. a miss. Othig, you're up. Alright. That'll hit. Yeah! 
So I'm just going to do this as plus two. And then that's one. Nice. And that will hit. That's going to kill that thing. So you smash the other skeleton to pieces with your fists. You're just reaching in there, ripping out bones and hitting him with more bones and clubs and stuff. And they all and all the enemies collapse. And about five seconds after that happens, um, there's a rumbling in the ground. And four rabbits burrow up out of the ground, yank a treasure box up, and then jump back down in the hole. And you hear clapping from up over around the edge by where that pile of skulls is on the ledge. And you look over there and there's Bob. Bob the camel cheering you on. Bob the camel. <laughs> I'll, I'll clap too. Woo! Can you even clap right now? I mean, you're, yeah. you're just mouth. He's just I'm throwing his mouth. tentacles together. Like, your mouths and eyes, that's all you are. His mouths are slapping together. They're pseudopods. <laughs> Don't be gross, he says, and then you follow it up with that. Okay. I'm clapping with my teeth. I'm I'm grabbing my glaive. Okay. Um, I don't know what I can grab. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know what I can wear. I can't wear, or like, what can I yeah. even use? That's true. Um, you would not be able to use any of your equipment. You could, however, get it for a time when maybe later you could. I will... Um, I will... I'll grab my... Uh, my uh, what's it called? The, um, the, the book. The, the ritual book. The, okay. The book. Cool. I'll grab the holy symbol. All right. <clears throat> So you guys grab your, your treasure, and as soon as you do, just like Randy said, the box disappears, fades away, and you're on to your next challenge. All right. So you head, we go. head back yes. out of the cave. Yeah. I would imagine go east down that path. Yeah. So you guys... You guys head out of the cave, and, and Bob sticks his head out of, out of some branches, and he's like, you guys are really great. I can't wait, Thanks, to, Bob. I can't wait to see if you win. No one's ever gone in the cave of ultimate evils before. I'll do my best to give a pseudopod thumbs up. He, he, he nods, he's like, that's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, he watches his head just kind of pulls back into the branches. <laughs> Alright, so we're slurping along. Where to? Yeah. What's my speed? Is it 15? It's 15. Okay. Um, is there more places to go in the swamp, or was the cave it? No, the cave was it. So then we have to go east, right? You do have to go east. So, you go east, and you start to catch the glimpses of two different lake shores through the woods. One to the east and one to the west. Um, to the west, you hear singing, and it sounds like maybe a waterfall? There is no sound coming from the east. Since I'm moving so slowly, can I... Can I just... Hop on Othig's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh no. <laughs> I figure even if his movement speed is impaired by whatever I am, mm -hmm. he'll still move faster than than me if I'm oh. regular. <laughs> my uh my walking speed right now is thirty-five. <laughs> There's you, you try and climb onto his back and Othig's even trying to help. He's trying to push you up with the shaft of his glaive and, and you just ooze right through everything. It's an, it is an impossible feat to do. And it's just gross. Othig, you are now covered in a slime. You're you're nasty. Great. Okay. Well I'm done with that then. <laughs> I'm like putting some distance between us. Right on. <laughs> I'm not going to 
gonna sound like angry in saying this. It's basically gonna be a combination of like disgruntledness and disappointment. <laughs> but I'm basically gonna tell you like like why'd you have to eat the pie? <laughs> Good. You just tried some. Uh, no. <laughs> I did one too from the beginning, if you're right. Oh, man. Oh, it's just great. Just fantastic. So, east or west? West has singing in a waterfall, east is quiet. Let's say the gibbering idiot to the west. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still the smartest one here. I'll have you know. Um, says the Lola Suleiman. Based on current events, I would say that is not the case. So you go to the west, and I need everybody to make charisma saving throws. As the singing gets louder, it's real pretty. Oh, I thought we went the other way where the wasn't singing. The other west? Oh, oh that's God. just no good. <laughs> so, um, there is um, a very lovely dwarven woman swimming in the pond here with no clothes on. And oh, you, you guys are all very excited about that and go charging into the pond. Well, not Thanuk. He kind of <laughs> slurps and then scooches down the side of the cliff and blurbles in. And you see his eyeballs pop up out of the water as he's <laughs> motoring through. You guys all jump <laughs> in. And you failed your Christmas saving throws. As you get closer, she lashes out at everybody in tendrils of vines and other things from the bottom of the lake reach up and grab you and pull you under and you are all drowning. Roll initiative. I'm going to be drawn before my turn comes up. <laughs> Alright. Where's my NPC? And you watch is like soundtrack, please. What? I would like a copy of tonight's soundtrack, please. Oh, it's yeah, sure. I can tell you what I what I played. And you watch as this dwarven woman transforms into just a terrifying looking representation of all of the horrors of what lies in the lake. And you will be fighting the Rasalka. Alright. Yep. So Mav, you are up first. You are underwater. Um, you have as many rounds to fight this thing. You get one and then rounds after that. You're being squeezed, so it's squeezing the air out of you as you have constitution bonus. So, you need to either get free and get to the surface or kill this thing before you start to drown. Are we charmed at all? You are no longer charmed. Once it attacked you, the charm dropped. Okay. Then... I am casting Bless on all of us. Okay. And that is my turn. Alright, Thana, you are blessed. Oh, that's terrible. That's oh a gosh, nat no one. Way. You still rolled the 11 with a nat one. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah. So you recovered on that swing. Your second at pseudopod attack. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? A nat two, but you do manage to hit it wow. thanks to Bless. <laughs> Is that really your attack at plus six? Yeah, because you're proficient with the with the with his, He's proficient with his pseudopods. No. Yeah. Um. I'm. So what's what's my? I I was using the attacks of the of the stick last round, and I didn't even think about it. What's my? Is it just regular? regular oh. 
strength? Yeah, it's it's one d four so plus your strength. So we don't divide yours there. One d four plus your strength. I don't. Oh, okay. Yep. There are benefits to that. being transformed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
Uh, yeah, let's see what's back east. Okay. So we're going to go back east. Um, you open up into a glade that has a lot of choices, it looks like. The forest opens up a great deal to the southeast, and there are more narrow passages to the northeast and northwest. But in the center of that lake, as you get closer to it, rising, it rises up out of it is a huge tower. It's really nicely built, and then a bridge comes out and connects to the land right in front of where you're standing. Check out the tower. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any, how, how far away is the like ground from the tower? It's not real far. Thirty feet, thirty, forty feet. Okay. Yeah, this map is more for fun and definitely not to scale. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys cross to the tower, and there is a doorway right in front of you. Big double doors. Sorry. Yeah, it's definitely not to scale because that tower would fit in that cave. Yeah, yeah easily. <laughs> yeah, the, the map is very much not to scale. It's just for fun. Um, I'll don't blow up the tower, guys. I'll uh, I'll do I'll do a rap 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 with my pseudopods on the door. <laughs> yep. And the doors, you hear a clanking noise, like somebody's lifting off a big heavy iron bar. And they swing open, and inside you can see a, the tower looks completely hollow. Can I change my shape at all? Um, make a strength check. Yeah, you can. You you realize after working at it for a little bit, you can kind of pull yourself around and pull yourself together some. Um, you might be able to make. A shape? What would you like to make? Well, I just meant, could I, like, flatten myself self out some some point? Or, oh, yeah. Or yep. Would I be able to, like, like a, make, like, a rigid form at all? Um, you can't go rigid. Start? You're definitely soft. You're always soft. But you realize you can pull yourself into close to shapes? Kind of square, okay. kind of flat. If I tr- can I turn myself into, into a ball? Yep, you can get kind of round. Would that, if, if, if Othig were to push me, would that in- increase my moving speed? It sure would, master shape. <laughs> <laughs> you are now meat wad. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. So you kind of round out and you can roll roll a little faster than everybody else. Well, not everybody else, but then you were. Now, are you going inside the big empty tower? Yeah. Yeah. I'll roll forward. Okay. As you guys all cross into the tower, the doors close behind you, and you watch as things begin to appear in the tower. And there's a huge set of stairs that starts to go up, and then it looks like they flip upside down, and another set of upside down stairs goes back the way they came, then there's an open archway that goes through the wall, and it looks like it should go to the outside, but you can see the top of those stairs through a doorway on the other side. And then the further up you look, the more convoluted it gets. Sometimes there's floors that are sideways, and there's doors that don't seem to go anywhere, but they do go somewhere, and there's hallways that go any which way. It's just, it's a big M.C. Escher tower. Yeah. It's a mess. And you hear from upstairs... Come on up for tea and games! Alright. Alright. Let's go. Um, Hopefully it doesn't have any pie with those tea. Make intelligence checks for me. As you try to navigate the tower. Oh, it takes you guys a long time. (laughs) See? Smartest one here. It takes you guys a long time to navigate this tower. Says the gibbering Um, mother. You hear, you hear at different points in time the, the old man's voice call out to see if you're still there, if you're okay. At one point in time he yells, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> and after about two hours of trying to traverse this tower, you come, oh my gosh. 
You make it up some stairs and it opens up into a nice flat area. It's well decorated. There is a table set for five and an old man pouring tea. And he asks if you'll take a seat. Uh-huh. I'll sit down. Okay. Do you allow his kind to be sitting at the table with <laughs> He looks over and he's like, you ate the pie! Yeah. <laughs> I'll ask him, do you know how to, can you reverse the effects of the pie? I could. But what yeah. fun would that be? You're not going to do it? We'll see. Maybe. We have to play games first. Let's play some games. What games? Well, he sits down, he starts talking to you for a while, explains that he's been the wizard of this tower for a very long time. He introduces himself as as Miramis. And um, he says, you're going to play a game with a friend of his. And as he says that, um, a a three-foot-tall humanoid appears. He has very mouse-like features. He's wearing pants and a puffy shirt and a big hat with a feather in it. And he introduces this new person, this new individual, is Fenris. And he says, the game is to catch Fenris. And at that, Fenris takes off running down the stairs. You guys just came up. I'll roll after him. Please make intelligence saving throws as you try to catch up to Fenris as he takes off down the stairs. Yes, you can cast Bless on your way out. Alright, so you guys take off. And Othig, you're getting pretty close to Fenris, and you're just about to reach out and grab him. Make an attack roll for me, because you're close. Oh, Mav's right behind you too. A little further back because he cast the spell, but not too far. You're good. You're going to grab Fenris, and as he does, he pushes a vase that he's running past, and the floor opens up beneath you, and you fall. Oh! You now have you land about a floor down on a bed, bounce off of it. And you're laying on the floor, looking around, and you hear the mouse laughing. So, Othig is or Mav is right behind him. He's catching up and. Danex in the back slurping along. <laughs> um, Mav making an tell it. No, what is this? This is a dexterity check to see if you can. He Fenris runs up on a wall, and he goes. He starts running upside down. Does that now put me in front of him? You don't know where you are in the tower right now. It puts you upside down. Uh, maybe. Mav, you go to grab him, and he runs up the wall and across the ceiling, and he's running back towards Othig now. So now I need everybody. <laughs> oh, think I need a de- an intelligence check for you to see if you can even figure out where you are. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. You think you know where you're going, so you 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 get up off the ground and you run out a doorway and you appear back up over here and you can see the stairs that go up to the tea room and all of a sudden you look out across this place and it looks like a Scooby-Doo chase. You know, everybody's running out of different doors and up different stairs and all sorts of fun things. Um, Thanok, Fenris is actually running back your way so with a good dexterity check you could maybe catch up to him. No. <laughs> You slurp forward, and he just laughs and runs through a doorway to the side. And as you two kind of get, as Mav, you and Oak Thanat get to this doorway at the same time, you can see that this hallway splits four ways. So I need intelligence checks so if you can figure out which way you went. Um, yeah, because Othig's coming up the hallway right behind you guys because he rolled well before. Alright, um, Thanok, you think he went down the middle, Othig says he went down the left, and Mav says he went down the right. Well, I'll go with the one that I think he's down. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with the one that I think he's down. Okay, so Mav, you and Othig, you, you, you start running down these hallways, and, and Othig, you end up outside. You're, you're standing on a balcony overlooking back down to the bridge where you crossed. 
Mav, you start running forward and you run into a spot where the floor is really slippery and you slip and you land on your butt and you shoot down two levels. And Othin, or Thanok, you're slurping forward and you see Fenris out ahead of you and he's just kind of like walking backwards, shaking around, like giving you finger guns. Yeah. <laughs> so make a dexterity check to see if you can pick up some speed and, and catch up to him. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you just slurping along. All right, I need intelligence checks from the other two to see if he can get back on the track. <laughs> oh, thing is not getting back on the track. Oh, thing, you go back inside and you see some stairs to another door, and you open up that door and you walk right back out onto the balcony you were on. <laughs> And Mav, 17, um, you, you climb back up some, what? 18, 17, yeah, you climb back up on the, some stairs and you come back up and, and you see Fenris and he's walking backwards towards you making fun of Thanok out in front of you, so make an attack roll and see if you can grab him. What is all that? Uh, which one were you? Is that the 13? 13 would be the first one. 13. So you reach out to grab him, and just as you go to close around him, he ducks, and he's like, oh! And so he's looking around right and left, and he runs towards Thanok, and then he runs alongside of the wall, and Thanok, you can reach up and try and grab him as he tries to run past you. Attack roll. Use your suction cups. I know. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So this mouth comes out, and as Fenris is running along to the side, this mouth just... <laughs> <laughs> and just grabs him. And he's squeaking and thrashing around and screaming, Let me go, let me go, let me go, you win! You are so gross, just let me go! I just want to hug him. <laughs> so as you catch Fenris, the entire tower starts to shift and move around, and all the pieces come back together normally, and it looks like a normal tower again. There's no right. no weird stairs or odd doors, just tower. Back up to the top. Yeah. All right. So you go back up to the top and. As Miramis is sitting there, and there's four rabbits having tea with him now in a big box sitting on the table in, in front of you. I'm going to ask him first, um, hey, so how did we do? Oh, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. You did better than the goblins that just came through here. That is, is about two hours. my friend back into a dwarf? I can turn him back into a dwarf if he wants to be turned back into a dwarf. I was just going to say, like, I can speak for myself. What if I don't want to be a dwarf? What if I'm perfectly happy is this shape? <laughs> Coming from Thanic? I, I will have you both know that I'm the one who caught him with my mouth. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes, I'll be, I'll be a dwarf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would also ask if they know how to get us out of the bank. Ah. Uh. He says, I don't, but there's a guy not too far from here. If you take the northeast path, he he knows how to leave, come in and out of the Fae. I haven't left the Fae in like 6,000 years. <laughs> so am I not a gibbering mother? Anymore? Yes, you are no longer a gibbering mother. Woohoo! <laughs> is, that, is that my item? What? Like, is it no, no, no. You can, you can still pick an item. Oh, okay. So I'll take my, uh, my, my mall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Othig, you asked him about if you did good, how who's the best that ever happened, and he says that the girls that came through were the best that ever did it. Um, before I even explain the rules of the game, the one girl with the pink hair cast whole person on Fenris. He never even left the table. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yep. Cole did that. He had no idea what the, what was happening. He had no idea what the challenge was. 
I hadn't even explained it to him yet. And I said, and something starts to appear next to the wizard, and he just yelled out, I cast hold creature on it, or hold monster on it. <laughs> That's epic. And I was like, okay, you just won the game. He's like, oh, great. It was really funny. So, and then there was Tony and Jason and another guy named Kit, who uh, last week... Um, we did this for about 20 minutes before we could get some good rolls out of them. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it, was, it was starting to not be fun. <laughs> oh. Like, you, you've had to, like, replay Yaggy Sacks, like, five times. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, Esmeramus tells you that somebody to the northeast probably knows how to get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what I want to take out of the box. Did you guys pick yet? I took my mall. No. What did you take the last two times? My book and my armor. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a pro power. Um. I'll take my enchanted vial. Of healing potions. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. So, um, did you? Do we want to ask him any more questions? I think Mav asks, asks the other question. I don't have any. Um, does he know how we win the show? You, you can get out. out! Oh, yeah, that is... Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Okay, so we want to go to the northeast. So that's the direction that the guy knows how to get out. Yep. Okay. I'll ask him if he's a dragon. Uh, no. Maybe? I don't know. Alright. Okay. I ran into a corpse that said don't trust a dragon. Just want to make sure that... Well, you shouldn't do it then. Corpses never lie to people. They, they, they don't. <laughs> they don't know how. That's the way that works. At least that's what someone told yeah. me once. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So you guys heading to the northeast then? Yeah. Alright. You leave Esmeramus' tower and you start to head toward the northeast. And after, you know, traveling, you know, half hour or so, you, you see a clearing forming and you see a campfire in it. And out ahead you can see a figure sitting, looks like on a fallen log near the campfire. And you hear them playing some music. I'm cover my ears. I'm cover your ears, okay. Yeah. Okay, you're covering your ears too. Are you going to approach? Yep. Mav, are you doing anything in particular as you approach? Casting Bless. <laughs> Alright. So you cast Bless and you approach. And, and the way the firelight, it, it, the way he's sitting juxtaposed to the firelight, it's pretty hard to make out any features of this individual until you get pretty close. And as you get closer... He turns around and he says, Welcome to my glade! I'm Ulrin Zabbis, you three! And you... <laughs> and there is a very grumpy looking satyr sitting on a log across from you. Like you hear his lute just start to play all sorts of discordant notes. And he's like, Of all the forests in the Feywild, you <laughs> walk into mine. Grumble. <laughs> That's awesome. What do you want? <laughs> Hey, um, we want to have your bed. Yelling because our ears are plugged. How have I been? How have I been? Do you know it took me two whole days to get out of that prison? That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. That is terrible. We want to get out of here. Do you now? Yeah, you want to come with? <laughs> well... No one's ever asked me that before. Ah. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> he was all ready to be like angry and he's like, wait. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty, like, it's a good call because he obviously likes being in, I, I'm going to say this out loud, like I'm going to say this to Thana and basically say like, 
Well, that sounds good because he must like being in the material plane because he's been there often. I, I do like being in the material plane. I do. Yes, I do, my friend Othig. It's it's so much more entertaining than it is here. Here, the fairies are always like, Oh, or and dance with us. Sing a song for us. We're pesky little fairies. Blah, blah, blah. It's just so dreary. I'll tell you what. I can get us out of here. Is it? There's an exit not far at all from here. But you're going to have to do something for us. I can't open it up without an item. There's a certain carpet that a gnome innkeeper has. Not too far to the north from here. Retrieve it, and I can get us out of here lickety-split. If you can get us, if, if you can get you out with that item, why haven't you left yet? I have a contract with the gnome that I can't swipe it. Swipe or no swipe? I'm actually uh, under contract to not enter his inn. <laughs> the last time I was there, it got a little rowdy. Clothes were taken off. People were turned into rabbits. It was a great time. The gnome didn't appreciate any of it. Hey, ma'am. Uh, uh, all right, are you under any contract that you have to stay here? I'm a performer in the show, so I will eventually have to come back, but if I can get that carpet, then I can come and go as I please in between. Okay. Mav, would you be willing to write a contract for all right? I was really hoping this would go there. That he would, that, that we would authorize any kind of shenanigans as long as they aren't done to anybody under the Granite Back banner. Okay, so I was, that was exactly what that's going to do. <laughs> I would ask uh, Alren if he has any paper. I, of course, what self-respecting contracting bot doesn't have reams of paper to write songs on? I, <laughs> um, I will draft a, uh, a contract with him. So, let me make sure I understand this. So, there's no sh- intercontractual shenanigans here on either side. Right. I just can't mess with you guys and your friends, basically. Yeah, and then we we could actually like I, like I there's a there's a few people that I think would enjoy your entertainment. <laughs> you know I may have misjudged you, <laughs> and here I thought you were a bunch of no fun nicks. <laughs> Romeo has tons of fun. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. It sucks. It does not. This sounds like. Something right up my alley. And he signs his name. Matt will sign his name. Do we have a way to, like, once we once we get you out of here, do we have a way to, to communicate with you while you're all away? I will teach you a chant that will allow me to speak to you over great distances. Sounds good to me. Sweet. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be waiting here for your for your return. All right. Yeah. Where's the Where's the end? To the north. You'll have to get past the fairies. They're is going. There, is there any any Yeah. What, what What should we What should we look out for? Well, they're going to want you to dance with them to pass to them. You could go back and take the river, but you'll have to sneak past Granny Toothache if you go that way. And then there's the well. Nobody quite knows what that does. <laughs> I'm very good. I mean, that sounds actually really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's transmutation magic. Yeah, maybe you can drink from it see what happens. <laughs> maybe you could. <laughs> so if you go that way, past the well, once you continue west, then you'll have to turn south. The inn will be just south of there. But your better bet is... is- to have a dance party with the fairies. 
I was going to say, the dance party, is there a reason, you said we would have to dance, is there a reason why we wouldn't want to? Well, if you do poorly, you might be there a thousand years. How, how poorly? Somewhere between ballet and Perry Baxter? I mean, because we dwarves are, are excellent rubber dancers. Good luck. <laughs> Um, what do you guys want to do? Obviously the dancing. Yeah? Because, I mean, the... Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. That's a negative on that one. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I mean, the, I'm interested in the waterfall, the, or the, 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 uh, the well. Of course you are. Yeah. I mean, I like to go where nobody's been. Yeah. <laughs> Those are gnomes. Those aren't dwarves. Those are gnomes. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's hard to find dancing dwarves on Google. No, it's not. The uh, Warcraft. Yeah, I was going to say, the only ones are from Warcraft, though. Yeah, that's why I said river dancers. Um, uh, no, I mean, which, which way do you guys want to go? We can vote on it. I, I think. What? North. That, that was my vote. Which way, Which one was north? The dancing. All right, let's go dancing. I vote dancing. All right, let's go dancing. All right. We are going dancing. Okay, so you guys head back north, and you come to an area that has a huge mushroom ring in it. And as you approach this area, you have not seen a sun in the sky the entire time you were here, but you're fairly certain it was daytime. You now, as you approach, the sun is setting. You've never seen it, but it's definitely sunset. And the closer you get, the darker it gets. And as you get just to the outside of this ring, it is completely dark. And then it starts to light up with all sorts of different um, glowing little, little people with wings floating around inside, and they're all kicking off glowing, you know, halos all over the place, and then you see them zipping around and making different shapes, and then the music kicks in, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. And the fairies get closer to you, and you see some of them have glow necklaces on, and some of them have glow rings on, and one's chewing on a pacifier, and it's definitely a rave. So, they're like, have you, have you come to dance with us? Are you going to dance in the ring? Yeah. All right. And then this big, well, like, buff, this big buff fairy comes up straight up to you guys. He's like, all right, boys, let's get in the ring. And then he starts doing the, he's, he's pumping his arms at you, and he's grooving. And now, you guys, it's a dance-off. I need a performance check. I'm going to use an aid. Dance off like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh things got moves. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good too. Wait, how many? How many are we doing? I just want one for now. Oh. Then I, you, you get out there and you're kind of just like. Oh wait, I get to roll d10, don't I? Yes, you do. And add your D4, because I heard somebody say bless. Oh, yeah. No, you put eight, which is just on you. Oh. Well, bless doesn't do skill checks. I, I see. I got you. Never mind. Let's do 26. Kiss. 26 is good. The fairies are all, like, cheering for you, and several of the girl fairies zoom up to you, and they're like, what's your name, big guy? <laughs> I'll, I'll say it. All right, you tell them Othig. And one of them goes, I like you. And they, she blows some dust in your face. Make a constitution saving throw. Oh, oh no. Good thing you did so well. <laughs> um, that is just enough. For a moment, Othig, your eyes get really blurry and the colors start to have smell to them. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's what orange smells like. And, and it's a good time. 
Um, they're like, boy, you're, you're really good at this. You can pass through. And then they look at Mav. They're like, you know what? You're not too bad either. Mav, make a constitution saving throw. Yes. All right, Mav, you pass. And they let you out to the other side. And then they all kind of turn and look at Othig. And they're like, you're just not that good. Come on, practice. Or Thanok. Practice, Thanok. I will practice. Nope, got worse. Mmm. One more. I'll ask them, maybe if I had some of your... Where's... Drugs? That would help me this enough. Yeah, you know, you might not know how to dance, but you know how to party. And and they blow a bunch of dust on you. Would you like to fail the saving throw? Um, what's the worst that could happen? You know what, yeah, I'll fail it. Alright, you fail it, and you turn in to a fairy. Oh my god! Can I dance? <laughs> You can make a performance check at advantage with a plus four. <laughs> so, you start to groove and they're like, Yeah! Go Thanok! Go Thanok! Woo! You're having a good time. It is a good time. Can yep. I go now? Oh, you, you can't leave now. You're one of us. I'm one of you. Great. Awesome. Great. <laughs> oh, great. Oh. Well, on the plus side, he should be well versed in being another creature when we become fish. <laughs> I don't have any response to anything. Um, my my immediate response is that I think I have like I, I feel like I think I just have to kill him. Um, you could certainly attempt to do that if you want. Yeah. How many are there? What are you doing? Up, like, how many fairies are there? There are six fairies in, in the... Well, they're pixies, technically, but pixies, fairies. Yeah. There are six gonna, of them in the ring. I'm, I'm going to ask if he has to stay here forever. I'm going to ask them if he has to stay here. No, sooner or later, everybody dies. Okay, so all of his natural time, he has to stay here. That's not gonna be helpful. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I just have to kill him all. Then. Okay. Um, since you're pixie sized against normal pixies, you will do regular damage. Okay. All right. Roll initiative. Are I'll you? yell! I'll yell so that everybody knows. Okay. We have to kill them. And the pixies are like, that. what? That's a bummer. Oh, well. <laughs> you see her. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. All right. Oh, really? They just leech each other like, yeah, that's not unexpected. Yeah, we got Let me pop open a different map here real quick. Nobody's ever fought the fairies before. Would you, would you also like to go on record that you chose to fail your saving throw? I mean, I just wanted a party. And become <laughs> a glittering mother? Seriously. I mean, I just wanted to eat. <laughs> oh my god. Do I have any of my, uh, like... I know I turned back into a dwarf, but like turning into this, is there any like residual differing mouther effects on me? No, you have no fairy a little like fairy mouther? No, you have no residual gibbering mouther effects going on whatsoever. That'd be a fairy with pseudopods. (laughs) Yuck. No. You basically (laughs) look just like Thanok, except you have wings. Yes, little fairy wings. 
Yep. Well, he wouldn't have bless. Have been... Yeah, he used aid, not much. bless, because it was skill checks. We never actually had it. He said we had it, but he never actually had it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Alright, you guys are up. Who's first? Man, yeah. yeah. Thanos, you want to go first? Since so you're leading the charge? Yeah, you know, well, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Sure, sure, go for it. So I'll just. Am I, like, am I attacking with my mace? Mm hmm. Cool? Yeah. Okay, so everything, I have everything, it's just fairy size. Yep. Um, so I'll just go after number one. Now. Um, please don't roll damage on the fairies because for you it's going to be sure. different. Okay. The other two can, but you cannot. So you clobber that one for five. Okay. okay, that is enough to kill Pixie number one. You whack it out of the sky, and it just kind of shrieks and screams, and it falls to the ground, and as it does, it just kind of erupts into a fireball of magical energy and hits the ground, like, really hard, and then just poof into glitter. Can I still be dancing as I'm doing this? Yeah, absolutely. Make a performance check. Is this still an advantage? It is. Advantage plus four. <laughs> Yeah. What style? Is that plus ten or plus? Yeah, plus ten. Yeah, so that's a, I, I rolled a thirty. Or did not show up. Or it, I rolled a six. Okay, so yeah, you you kind of dance your way over there, and that fairy was so shocked it didn't know you were gonna attack it at first, and then like you hit it, and all the other fairies, especially the bro fairies, were like, "Whoa!" But the moves. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Mav's turn. Um, I'm gonna use my divine precision on that. Okay. <laughs> it explodes. <laughs> it it explode explodes. You just wail on it with this blast of magical energy, and this fairy just boink, pops right out of existence. Oh, thing. Believe it up. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You backhand that. One. You backhand that fairy to death. And run down over here. I'm gonna butt swing another one. <laughs> the party I wants Lynn to come over my. Okay, I'll let Lynn know. Hold on. Um, you cannot butt swing the other one. You're too far away from it. You use too much movement already. You can't. Yeah, I will. Don't worry about it. Holy cow. I really can't make it over to it? Yeah, no, because you, you, and, you and Thanok or Mav were on the far end of the mushroom room. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Hey, Lynn, where were you? There was a gathering over at the room. Man. <laughs> I believe yeah, there was a lot of children, but it would have been nice to say it's like, hey, I dumped three things, one around. Yeah. Alright. It's not even that you just dumped them, you instant killed them. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now it is the Pixies' turn. Um, They are both. Let's see here. Really wanted three left, but I don't get three. Um, they both fly kind of away. They're a little frightened, and Othig and Thanok both need to make intelligence saving throws. Thanok saves. Othig does not save. Othig, what are you most afraid of as a dwarf in the whole world? Um, what? Well, probably probably either, what? Yeah, probably either a skeleton or skellies or something else. Okay. I'd have to try. 
There's no more beer. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a giant yeah, about monsters, yeah, but... skeletal minotaur waving around an empty keg of beer yeah. appears in front of you. And you feel unbelievably compelled to attack this thing. And it's, okay. it smucks you, as it appears, for 11 points of damage with that barrel. And it is now Thanox's turn. Um, so I guess I'll just go after fixing number five. Alright, so you fly over to pixie number five. So that's ten. That ten, okay. And ten. Alright, that will kill number five then. I will use an action switch. <laughs> okay. I will go after pixie. I will not, I'm still a warrior. I'm a fighter. Warrior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's 13 against number 6 and then 6. Okay. Uh, so that I'm one. I'm going to use uh, what's it called the second one. Just like that. Okay. That one is hurting real, real bad. It's bloodied. It, you, you smacked him right in the face and it looks like you broke his jaw with that mall oh, swing. Can I still dance? Yeah. Make a performance check. Yep. Killing it with these sweet moves. And you definitely learned the ways of the pixie. Mav, you're up. They're dance fighting. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> oh, the, the pixie failed. So you hear a bell ring and this pixie's head just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and it drifts to the ground. Um, and let's see. Othig, your nightmare does not go away, though. Okay. Can anyone else see it besides me? No one can see it besides you. Um, on your turn, you can you you can make a saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Hey, you lay into the Minotaur pretty good. Oh, it's a bludgeon. Nice. And you said wisdom? Yep. Okay. Oh, you made it. So as... That's funny. Your your butt swings hit harder than your other... Yeah. I know. So as you make your wisdom saving throw, it fades away, revealing it to be a lasting illusion. And, Yeah. You guys have slaughtered the fairies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of sad about it, but... Okay. Um, you, you can tell I'm really not in the greatest headspace right now because my first response is, I feel like we should eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Gain their strength. You know we incinerated them, right? Like, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> well, there's, there's a body left, at least, of one of them, a couple of them. I don't think there is. Yeah, there's Maybe we should go put that in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you a cannibal then? Um, no, I'm still a dwarf. No, no, you're not. Look at me. I just have fairy wings. I see. No, you're not a dwarf with wings. You're a pixie. No, I am a dwarf with wings that's small. Do you have any pixie dust? My what is dwarf, dwarf dust? <laughs> yeah, dwarf dust. He, does, he currently does not. Currently. <laughs> Is there like a bag of pixie dust laying around? Um, perception check. You you look around and it looks like um, Othig's right that when they died, most of them exploded into glitter. So it looks like all their equipment went with them too. You do find a couple of limbs, but nothing useful. All right, let's go. 
All right, so we're heading further north. So you guys continue north to the gla to, and you see the inn that Ulrin described to you up ahead. Did we get something else out of the bag? Oh yeah, yeah, you you do. Sorry, the rabbits, the rabbits come out and they're looking at you guys all like, oh. like wow, you guys killed the pixies. <laughs> wow, okay, no one's ever killed all the pixies before. <laughs> and the camel's got his head out the things and he's kind of just making a grimace he's like I don't know if you should have done that <laughs> did we did we have a uh, bag of holding did we have one you do not Phil has it Phil has it yep um <laughs> you know it's really funny it's so like you know, our, our adventure obviously started here, and not a one of us said anything about, like, hey, we're just... <laughs> I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, okay. I'm with you. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's like, we all get teleported from a... From a... From a, from a, from a, from a humongous, it's, it's like, true. multi-headed you... snake. Guy. That's true, you guys did blame Phil, so you kind of didn't care where he was because you knew it was his fault. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's that's true. So you. I will. I guess. I guess I'll take. I don't know. I... Um. Oh, don't mind the crazy people. She <laughs> ain't out with you, There's a birthday party over there. Our friends' is 21st birthday party. Oh, neat. Oh. What are you guys taking? Water. <laughs> what did you say? He said water. Oh. Um. I guess I'll take my tinker stools. All right. Oh, the box popped up. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm said. What are you taking? I'm gonna take my rope. Rope. Uh -oh. I'm gonna take my boots of Stratagon Springy. Nice. Alright. I should have asked them how big this carpet is. Big enough for a magic carpet, right? To a whole new world. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. You guys standing outside the inn? What do you want to do? Go into the inn. I'm s how how big actually am I? You're about a foot tall. <laughs> can, and I can fly. You can fly. Um, am I able to look in any windows to see before we go in? It's just to kind of see what we're. Getting. Yeah, make a perception check. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the wrong thing. It's a, so it's a six. Okay. Um, you guys start looking in through the windows, and it's kind of hard to make stuff out. Um, Mav, you can see that the, it doesn't look like anybody is in the inn currently. Uh, looks like there is a gnome behind the bar in the main area. No, wait. Guys, quick run in and steal the carpet. And we I'll don't even know, like, it could be any one of a number of carpets. How many carpets are there? You don't know. You I haven't been inside. Know. It's an inn. Didn't he say it was a carpet <laughs> in front? I just want to see Thanic like, run in and steal one random carpet. Or I'm run not going to steal anything. I'm a foot tall. I don't remember him saying... I, did, what did he say? I thought he, I, I swear, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear he said it was the carpet in, in the front room. I don't think room. I said say? that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there was any mention of like. In uh, my in my you... in my head, I I had this whole scene. Yes. In vision, and I don't know where I came where I, <laughs> yes, came up did. with it. From I, your I head. It was like there was a gnome in like behind the bar, like as a bar back, whatever. 
and there's a carpet out in front, and that's the carpet that we need. Yeah, I think we need to find out, like, we need to find out about the carpet. Fine. Sorry, dude. Alright. <laughs> so, you, you're going in? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So, Mav shakes his head because you were like, wait, I got this crazy idea that didn't work out. <laughs> and then he just goes in. And you're like, yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yep. <But> what's him? <laughs> <laughs> and you see a gnome um, work in the bar. Uh, oddly enough, though, you see him from about the waist up, and it is a human heighted bar. Imagine they're watching the side of the bar. Um, like, not necessarily the side, like, where you're walking into the bar. Like, mm-hmm. it, the bar wraps around to that side. Yeah. You, you peek around the bar. And as you're walking in, he's like, can I help you? And then you peek around the bar, and he's like, can I help you? And he is definitely floating on a magic carpet. I was just curious how you were up there. He's like, my magic carpet! And he zooms up over the top of the bar, and he's kind of zooming around the around the room. Get him! <laughs> I'm going to slide down the hole and say he wants a man. He's like, all right! Welcome to the welcome to the show. Welcome to I'm guessing you're participants in the show, right? Because you're Definitely really yes. you're really under geared to just be adventuring in the Feywild. Oh, Otherwise. Yes. So he, he pours some beers and he's like, So, what's the deal that Alrun cut with you to steal my rug? <laughs> I'm gonna tell him straight up. He didn't cut a deal with us. I'm gonna tell him straight up. You'd be lying. He didn't cut a deal with us. I'm telling him. He's got to deal with him. <laughs> so you tell him the whole thing. He's like, so you want to get out. Alwyn said he'd show you a way out if you get my rug. Hmm. I can tell you a way out if you take Alwyn a rug that looks like my rug. <laughs> we didn't specify which rug we needed to get. We did. We did. The magic one. <laughs> is the other world magic? Remember, we signed. He signed a contract with us. I mean, oh, we'll, the contract and we the contract and we magic rug. It says to get the rug that Ulrin wants from the gnome. Yeah, he can't oh. get us. He can't get us out if we don't bring him the right rug. He can't get out. <laughs> that was the face of. Technicalities. <laughs> <laughs> what to do, what to do. Um What's the rock he wants us to give us to? Nothing. <laughs> what if we promise to bring it back to him someday? Okay. That's a good idea. Make a persuasion check. Yeah, I mean, make a persuasion check. Hang on, I'm looking. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Can I aid myself? It's a skill check, and you, you're forming an argument. I would say yes. So someone else should definitely. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Thirteen still not too bad total. Um. He's like, yeah, no. Even if we signed a contract, I just... Someday is way too vague. And what if what if you lose it and can't fulfill? No, 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 no. I... I would trade it for something, though. For what? I want you to find out what's at the bottom of that well. Alright, let's let's make up a contract. I'll make up a contract. Fantastic. We didn't even ask what it is. <laughs> what does he want? He doesn't know. He no just one wants to know what's at the bottom. No he one doesn't want it. He just wants to know. He just wants to know what's at the bottom? Yep. He specifically said, I want to know what's at the bottom. Oh boy. 
Okay. You don't even have to give it to him. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a monster, of course, but I'm just saying. Um, does he know the fastest way to get there? Oh, it's it's just west of here and a little south. Follow right. the path. Okay. Is there anything between us and it? No. Oh, good. Dad yeah, doesn't have to murder anything. What does he know about the well? You one shot a fairy. <laughs> With Don't a lot of damage. Mr. Kirby action surge to go kill all the fairies. I didn't kill all of them. I kill them all. I didn't kill all of them. You killed one. To be fair, I killed one. And you killed like four of them in one round. The gnome is appalled. He's like, you, you, you guys killed all the fairies? No. No, not all the fairies. Oh. Just the ones in that circle. He's a fairy. I'm a fairy right here. You're an ugly fairy. <laughs> Listen, beauty was not a prerequisite of being a fairy. <laughs> that's, that's, Show me your dance moves. That's yeah, sad. I'll dance for him. They, sure, sure. He says they drank a lot. They dr- those fairies knew how to party. Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. Sixteen plus yeah. four. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a fairy dance. That's cool. Yeah. I've kind of lost interest in dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh. Alright. So it's different I'm, when you were beating people up and dancing. I know. There was a, there was like dance fighting uh, is something I can get, like, get behind. Off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off to the well. So you guys have gone two places tonight that nobody else has ever gone. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask him if he knew anything else about the well. Only that people don't. People seem to want to avoid it at all costs. Oh, good. Great. Yes, the people seem to avoid to want the want to the cave of ultimate evil and be fine. <laughs> I was gonna say, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the fairy dust they blew at me is certain. <laughs> On to the so well. We'll, we'll, we'll put you. Uh, no, it takes it away from you. We'll put you there. On to the well. So, you guys walk down the path, find a well. Does that have a rope or a ladder or something? There is a rope. I also have a rope. And a bucket. I'll just fly down. Yeah. Yeah, you should do that. How deep is it? Um, you cannot see the bottom looking in from the top. So it's more than 60 feet. Yeah, do I still have uh, dark vision? Dark vision as a fairy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'll go down. Okay, you fly down the well, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 150, about 200 feet down, Jeez. and it opens up into a wide cavern. And then the tunnel above you closes. And you guys up at the mouth of the well, it comes alive and it's full of teeth and this big lashing tongue coming out of it. And you guys need to kill the mimic. I got eaten. That's a, that's a, that's a mimic? That's a well mimic? What? Yeah. Mine is broken. What the frick? This is absurd. This is absurd. Adam, you should stop doing things tonight. God. Oh, the Feywild. Uh, every time every time we talk about it. Every time. Oh, God. I love it. Every time. Oops. Oh, jeez. Alright. Initiative, huh? Initiative. Out of this place. So did I. 
Punch it, throw it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, Mav, you're up first, yeah, it looks like. I suppose... We'll just shoot it. Do we want a battle map for this? Um, Mav is going to stay away from it as much as possible and push all the in front of it. Okay. Stand next inside of it. So you blast it with a guiding bolt. Do 17 radiant damage to it. And then it is its turn. Let's see. If you are going to move away from it, because you were close to it before, it does have a 15-foot reach, so it is going to take a swipe at you as you go to uh-huh. run away. Can you take a swipe? Um, uh, it'll hit. <laughs> 11? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I, this does not Never mind. does not. All right. So it just barely misses you. And Does it come into my space, or was I too close? You were standing right next to it, I'm going to assume. Because if your fairy dwarf cousin is going to fly down the wall, you're probably all watching it happen. Yeah. You're not, like, hanging out 15 yeah. foot yeah, down. Yeah, yeah you're, you're all watching it. All right, so then it's going to take its two regular attacks at Ryan. That shows a terrible roll. 23 on the first one. 18 on the second one. Ryan, I need you to make a strength saving throw. This thing is extraordinarily sticky as it hits you, and it likes it wants to cling to you. So you, you pull yourself off of the pseudopods as they as they pummel you, and you're not stuck to it. Um, you feel like you just barely got away, but it does do 19 points of damage between those two hits to you. Okay. And it is now your turn. Guiding bolt. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, yeah, so second one. Dude. Hey-oh. Um, I'm going to action surge. Nice. Dude. And then I'm going to second wind as my bonus, and that's my turn. Action Surge will give you two extra attacks, Ryan. Because you get two attacks when you take the attack action. Thought we said that. that doesn't doesn't matter. No, no, there's only one bonus action, but you yes. get four action is two attacks. So yep. it gives you an extra action. You don't get to use your butt swing again. I feel like I forget this ever before. When you action surge but to attack, you would get a total overall of five attacks. Yep. Four attacks, right. Four attacks, right. And the bonus. I'm going to use my bonus to second one. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a bonus. That's really yeah, it is. Yeah, the one is. Yep. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Cool. So, Thanok, you're up. I need um, you to make a constitution saving throw. It smells awful down here. Okay, so you make your saving throw, but you do start coughing and it does burn your lungs. You are only going to take four points of damage. Your, um, where's the echo? Oh, four. Um, so, I'm small. Yes. Based on my combat with the pixies or fairies or whatever, uh... It is, are my physical attacks doing less? You have a feeling they're going to do much less. Um, what if I were to use um, my 
second quest? Would that do regular that damage? That would do regular damage. Okay. Mm-hmm. I will do that. Yep. And that's me. Okay. Um, at the end of Thanok's turn, you guys do watch the mimic heal a little bit. Mav, you're up. Mav is gonna shoot it again. Okay. Right. He can see him backing up. He continues backing up. Well, that's good because you watch as this well like shoots up out of the ground, and so now this wellhead is is like a towering serpent, like waving around, and it looks like he could probably reach 30, 40 feet out. And Mav, you have moved just beyond where it could pummel down and grab you. So while it's doing that down back at its base, the two pseudopods pop back out. That is a 29 and a 20 to hit. So it is going to do... Alright, um... Ryan, I need the dex- or the strength saving throws as it tries to grapple you. No. It definitely has you and it pulls you in and bites you as well. So you take a total of 32 points of damage. Most of that bludgeoning, 8 of it acid. It is now your turn. You are restrained, so your attacks are now at disadvantage. Um, I just want to try to break out of it. Okay. You're going to use your action to, set, to break free? Yeah. Okay. Strength? Uh, athletics or acrobatics, whichever you prefer. Oh. Definitely. Mm-mm, it still got you. Okay. Alright, Thanok. Constitution saving throw in here as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. It is more potent this time around, though. But you still made your save. So you hit it. How much, for... well, how much damage did it take? Oh, uh... This time you'll take 12. up again. Mav, your turn. Mav is going to use his spell storing necklace to cast the third belt. Uh, that does hit, just barely. on its attacks against Othig. Bye, guys. Yeah. It's going to hit you twice and then auto-bite you. So it's going to do... Well, if it's more than nine damage, I'm down. Okay. You do go down. Okay. And... <laughs> Mav, you watch as it swallows Othig and starts to transform back into a well. Othig, you are currently tumbling down its throat. Make a death saving throw. Ooh, that's funny. That'd have been great. <laughs> so, 
I don't know that that wouldn't be great because then I just come back up with one health point as I'm falling. Yeah, yeah. but it's better than having BB knock and oh. landing. Yeah. Thanok, I need a constitution saving throw from you. Okay, so you make it again. So you oh, were. That's weird. I didn't record my. Didn't record my first uh, success. Because you're not unconscious. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Whoops. Yeah. All right. Um, nineteen points of. Oh, the cow that's gonna of acid damage. What kind of damage is that? Acid. acid damage. Yeah. Twenty-three plus nineteen. Yep. That's enough. Yep, and it's your turn. Uh, how? Ouch. Uh, what's the word looking for? Um, how's he looking? He, it's hard to tell from the inside, but you... I'm inside. I can't even make a madness. What are you doing with that advantage? Oh, sorry, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. That's terrible. I'm going to use a bonus action to take a potion. You should make a perception check. <laughs> I mean, but he wouldn't know to make a perception check. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm like 200 plus feet down. Yeah. Yeah. You still hear Mad yelling at you. (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. Um, Like, in the back of your mind, you know Mav is just yelling at you, so things are normal. (laughs) Things are normal. I'm going to take three of these potions. All right. Mav, you are up. The well has receded. You will hit it. Okay, guys. I want to eat some. That didn't actually do any damage to it. No, it didn't. So I, need to take... I got it. I need to take any damage. It is looking like it's having a hard time keeping its form. So, let's see. Oh, Fig. It yeah, is... It's, back. What was that? it's not doing anything to you. Or to you. It is turned back into a well. Um, Thanak, you watch as right above your head, this, this sphincter that closed off opens up, and you watch Thanak tumble, or Othig tumble out of it. And he is tumbling towards the stomach acid down below you. Um, so he's going to land in that and take some damage, which will result in one failed death saving throw. And it is now your turn. I'm going to try... Actually, it's two death saving throws because he takes damage while unconscious. It's two. Or is that just melee? No, it's anything. Yeah, so he's at two two fails. And it is your turn. Yes. Don't kill yourself off. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> oh no! Awesome. All right. Thanok, it's your turn. That completely screws up my plan. You dying screwed everything up. Hold on, just a sec. I could have oh, swore. He is still alive. If unconscious, a character takes damage at zero HP, they automatically fail one death saving throw, or two deaths if the damage is a critical hit. Oh. Melee like melee hits, hits are automatically hits. critical hits. So that's what I thought. And Andy said no, and I was like, well, no, I don't know. And then you died, so I thought I better just check. Glad I did. Okay. Okay. Othig is okay. laying in a puddle, looking real, real bad. <laughs> okay, so here's. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm so glad this worked out. Let's see if it actually works out. With my action, that's like your plan. With my action, I am going to give Othig a glow shirt potion. Oh, do you have one? I have three of 
You didn't. That's right. I, I can't heal that either. Dang it. I totally forgot about that. So I can't I can't use that potion last round. Um that's right. Hey. Hey, I took some potions. But I have on me. Did you? That's <laughs> why. He does. Okay, then yeah, I'll use that one. <laughs> you would have known that. Oh that man, the close room potion was a Genius! Man. That was genius, oh. but unfortunately, not. I not have happen. one, one d four plus one, and one two d four plus two. I will. I'll give you the just the small one just to get you up. Okay. And then we'll figure out what we want to do. There's acid on the bottom, or no acid? There's acid on the bottom. He's laying in it currently. Well, you got to roll 1d4 plus 1. I did. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep, so you have four hit points. And that's your action. Bonus action. Okay. Then I need that dexterity or that constitution saving throw for me. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so still make it. You will take twenty points of acid damage. Mav, you're up. Well, since somebody actually left me my thing. <laughs> um, you guys down in the stomach are being jostled around and there's acid flying everywhere and you're going to take some damage as this thing barfs you back out onto the ground up out of it and you can make saving throws for me please is this is like so that we don't fall? no this is for against the acid damage so this is constitution oh, is yep You'll both make it, so um, you'll both only take 15. So Oath, it goes unconscious again. It gets barfed out onto the ground. Thanuk is also <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> Mav, your, your uh, cousins just got barfed out onto the ground, and they look to be in pretty bad shape. Yep. Wow. Okay, so... What else came out with them? Um... There is a large, round stone. Like, it's dwarf-sized. We can turn off the back of music. What do you guys want to do? I mean, yeah, it can be all kind of hard. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was kind of nervous when in that round I, I made all my hits, but I did 49 points of damage and didn't push it into heavy. Yeah. That made me real nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this is going to take too long. Yeah. <laughs> it was designed to be just about as close as it was. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It was designed well. So, um, what do you guys want to do? Um, I want to examine the dwarf sized stone. Did, uh, uh, did some bunnies come out or anything? Yes. Yep, rabbits definitely come out after that. I would like to take... Can I take a potion or all my potions? Well, take you can the take the, the potion vial. You can take the yeah, vial. That counts as one. Yep. Okay. All right. 
Hey, Mike. Yeah. Um, if I grab a bow, do the arrows come with it? Yes. I don't. Okay. That'd be really mean. Well, I thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's worth arrow, an ask. Definitely, <laughs> wor- definitely worth an ask. <laughs> Not one arrow would be the pack, but... All right, I'll take the longbow of penetrating force then. All right, cool. Uh, can I do? Can I do like a arcana check on this? This. Or yeah. Um. I have made a perception check on the stone. It looks like it's calcium. It. You. You've been around animals enough over the course of the caravanning work that you've done that you've seen, like. Animals barf up like a calcium glob that gets stuck in them in their throat or whatever from eating, and it's. It's really gross, but it's super round and polished. Um, an arcana check would give you nothing, no matter how well you rolled. So it's a gallstone. It kind you think it might be that something like that, or maybe a gizzard stone or something or that. Something. Can, can I take the sledgehammer out of the the? <laughs> yeah, you you didn't pick yet, so you could take the sledgehammer. Yeah. I'm gonna take the sledgehammer and hand this whole thing. Break it open. Why? Why can't I hit it with my mall? I suppose. Well, can we can we have an advantage roll to crack this sucker open then? Yeah, you guys can start pounding on it. You want to roll it or me? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Oh, advantage. So, yeah. see if I roll better. No. Nope. All right. So you guys start beating on it, and it cracks open. In the middle of it is. A, is it a baby? No. You don't know what it is, but it's it's a clear sphere. It is perfectly clear and perfectly round. Then it's about the size of your fist. It looks like a crystal ball, but it, it looks solid. Like a crystal ball you can check that. Yeah, can I check that? Sure. <laughs> Cadbury egg. Jeez, you gotta kidding me with that. No clue. <laughs> you get advantage because I would help you. Hey, hey dude. Nat yeah, one, you would net, net twenty. Add your D ten. Yeah. Dude, look at that thing bounce. Eight. Oh, that is a thirty-five. Um, this is not something magical. Um, however. It's it's a good enough roll. Yeah, I know, right? It's a good enough roll, and these are used in components. You think this is a diamond. But it's got no facets, and it's a, it, it is a perfect sphere. Um, I'm going to take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely keep this. Yeah. Alright, well, let's go tell dude what we found at the bottom of this well. We'll know what's up in it. Do we, yeah. being dwarves and all that such, I mean, do we, do we have any, would we be able to, like, do, like, a history, not a history check, but, like, a, like a geology test. <laughs> you know what I mean? To, to, de- like, to, to determine what? Well, to basically, what an engineer. Yeah, I mean, would, like, have we ever heard of this thing? You never heard of this. You, in all of the gemstones and the other work that that other dwarves and people have, have come across and done, you've never heard of a smooth round diamond like this. If it, but if it's not a diamond and you suspect it is due to its hardness and and some of the other factors, it's still a crystal of unparalleled perfection. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, let's keep it. See what we can do with it. Cool. All right. So you head back to the inn, and the gnome asks, "What'd you find? What did you find down there?" I'll show him my singed wings. Found a lot of acid. It's a well full of acid. Well, good thing I never drank out of that. It's a well full of mimic. Oh. (laughs) He just starts laughing. He's like, "Oh man, oh man, that's so funny." That yeah, is funny. so funny. Well, a deal's a deal. And he hops off the magic carpet and he says, and he, Was it flying when he hopped off? Yes. 
Yep. He says, now, I, I want you to know something about this. It only works one day out of the month. So, today's the day. Okay, is that's... It different, is it a different day every month? No. There's only like a specific day. No, it's what. Well, it recharges, and once it's recharged, it takes a month to use it again. Okay. Okay. So. So it'll last you the rest of today, but after today, it's kaput for, for another month. Right. For a moon okay. cycle. Right. How, how many hours does it have left on? Yeah, three, four. Okay, not enough to take. It. Is it like an eight-hour? Sun up to sundown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sunset to sunrise. So okay. half the day. Literally 24 hours. Okay. Alright, right. fair enough. Alright, let's get back to uh later. Alright. So you cruise back to Ulrin. You can fly your carpet if you wish. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a little tight with the three of you on there. It's going to be... I'll just fly along. Okay. Unless they're going significantly faster. They can go faster than you. You'd you'd have to dash every time to keep up with them. To be fair, you could just sit on one of our shoulders. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I keep forgetting you're not dwarf sized. So, yeah. It's. Right. So you, you cruise back to Ulrin, and and he he sees you coming, and he's just like, my friends, oh my friends, you found the carpet. How. How lovely. It's like, you don't look so good, and you're now a fairy. Oh, you lost the dance contest, didn't you? No, I didn't actually lose it. I, I, I actually asked for this. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so okay. I'm going to need to get this fixed. Well, it should wear off eventually. But okay. he kind of shrugs. It's not a bad look for you, and you get to flit about. That's kind of fun. Yeah. How, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Has its moments. Has its moments. All right. And he climbs up onto the carpet, and he's like, shall we? Yes, because yeah. we only have a few hours. Oh. Oh, the gnome was already using it when you took it. Ah. Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Oh. We'll let him know the, the limitations of oh. the stimulation. Oh. Sounds you, like he already knows them. You have made, pla- you have made me a happy satyr. Oh. Glorious day. So he pulls down a little bit further from his campfire, and he, he he beckons to the north, and there's a very narrow path there, and there's a big sign out front that says, that has skull and crossbones on it, and beneath it, it says, and he can read Sil- Sylvan, so he tells you, he says, communists keep out. <laughs> Territory okay. of the first brigade of badger freedom fighters. He's like, we're going to have to fly down in there as fast as we can. Because the minute we cross the barricade, they're going to try to blow us up. Oh Who's my gosh. This thing? What? Should I use piloting this? Well, whoever the, the... wants to, I would recommend somebody dexterous. I'm quite nimble myself, but perhaps it should be one of you. Making the There's checks. Probably need, none of us are dexterous. So ah. you are probably the best option. Well, as the resident NPC, I'm rather uncomfortable making those rolls. <laughs> <laughs> so how about I give you advantage using my your dexterity and my foreknowledge of the explosions to come? That's fine. As a, as a fairy, do I have any... Better decks no, decks you decks? have you have your own statistics as a fairy. So then I think uh, Othic's the only one with, right? Um, I was gonna provide support firing <laughs> a bow if we needed it. But I mean, you're the only one with that has any decks, right? Yeah. Well, the plus one probably won't help him. Yeah, so yeah, I've got plus one. So I vote Thanic drives the, the vehicle. Oh, they shoot the ball, bow, and I attempt to absorb any magic that comes in. Alright. If yes. badgers are slinging magic. They're trying to blow us up. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna take some potion. I think you should probably do that too. Um, I'm gonna save my potion in case I go down so someone can get me up with it. 
You took how much do you have? I only have one potion left now. Oh, I have eight. So I'll give. I'll take. A, you can have a swig of mine. Okay. Yeah, seriously. Well, how many do you want me to use? I'll. I'll. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. I'll use. Use two. So we'll each use two. What are, what are yours? Two d four plus two. Yeah. Two. two okay. Four plus two. If you're drinking out of that bottle, you get to use as many D4s as you want. Once you pour it into there, that's a big pool of D4s. So... Yeah. So if they're 2D... Um... So you're going to give me 2, so that's 4D4. Ulrin does not want you dead. You have two D four. Oh, you're okay. Got yeah. it. Um, well, I'll just can I just use the first two then? Sure one? can. All right. And then Ulrin will also cast some healing spells on you and give you ten more hit points. It's like, Sweet. I can't, he's like, I can't have my pilots passing out in mid-flight. That would ruin the show. I mean, like, I was thinking about just saving the saving the potions in case I need them, but I was like, if I take a, like an errant fireball, where I. <laughs> Yep. So. All right, that puts me to forty-four. All right. So, he says, "Is there anything else we want to try and prepare for? This is going to be a bumpy ride." I think. Can I strap myself to the carpet? <laughs> some rope. Um, you can. You can definitely tie up with yeah, some rope. rope. Yeah, he took hey, his rope. I have a question. I have yeah. a question. When we returned to Ulren at the fire pit, yeah, and his problems, did we get another chest? Oh yeah, you would have gotten another chest. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. I would say my potions. So with that, I have eleven D four or seven D four, seven D four. If you need. I'm okay for the moment. I will. I will take. I'll, take I'll roll. Two. I'll roll two more out of that if you don't want. I'll grab my shield. Uh, uh, Ulti, don't forget you have your um, second wind. Why? Oh, you don't have your second wind. No, yeah. No. Use that. That's right. That's right. So, did you hear me, Mike? I'll grab, I'm gonna grab my shield. Yep. Can I, am I able to put my shield on while I'm piloting? Uh, yeah, because it's, it's concentration to control the run. So, yeah, you can do yeah, it. That was me I could just grab my backpack that's filled with stuff, correct? <laughs> correct, you are correct. You cannot grab the backpack. All right. All so, right, um, are we going to get the rest of our stuff when we get out of the bay? Yes, you get all your stuff back. Yeah, I'm going to let's go. So, all run points. Tally ho! <laughs> and oh, or Thanok kicks the rug into gear, and you guys go yeah. z- zipping down into into the uh, into the path. Yep, and you see Badger starting to pop up everywhere, and you hear you hear him start yelling, "Release the barrels! Kill the invaders! Communists will never win!" And I need you guys to make dexterity saving throws as these barrels on ropes on fire come swinging down towards your carpet. Is mine at advantage? Uh. Because it's helping me, is that what it is? No, your, your drive checks are at advantage. Drive checks, okay. Oh, that's not so good. So the first set of barrels blows off near you guys, and you. <laughs> You're going to take 18 points of damage, 9 if you saved. Then now I need a drive check from you. This is at advantage. Is this a check or something? It's, it's a check. <laughs> Andy, would you like to give him aid? I think I can go with it myself. Or guidance. Do you have guidance? No, it's touch. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you give him guidance, and he hits that 12, and it's just enough to clear the next explosion. 
and dive right down into the cave, and all of a sudden the walls of the cave start exploding everywhere. I need dexterity saving throws again. Can I, can I take a yep, you can. <laughs> this one's gonna be 12 damage. Six if you save. That would have killed you. Yep. Is it a swamp? Yep. So. Um, I'll use my other voice. <laughs> you're zooming in, and up ahead you can see a pool of water, and Ulrin yells, In the pool! In the pool! Drive into the pool! And I need a dexterity check for you as you dr dive towards the pool. That is much better. That is much better. You're flying right into the pool as the last barrels go off, so one more dexterity saving throw. Oh. oh! That is going to be 24 points of damage for anybody who rolled under a 12. 12 for anybody who rolled over. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Mavs down. <laughs> so, Oathing's holding on to both of you guys, and Ulrin's trying to keep the two dwarves on the carpet as it just plunges straight into this pool of water, and you just bloosh, and you tumble out on the other side in all of your unconsciousness. Um, Oathing, you sit up, and there's Randy staring at you, and he's like, Whoa, some, somebody did... So if somebody gets some healing, wait, I'm a druid. I got healing. <laughs> and and he goes over and he administers um, some, some healing touches so you guys pop back up with some hit points. And he's like, wow, what a finish. That was amazing, you guys. You totally got blown up by the badgers. And, and you sit up and you're looking around and you see Bob the camel and the rabbits and they're like pushing the forest around you. And the entire forest starts to move and you look closer and it's on wheels. And it's just rolling away and there's this, this concrete wall behind it. And as that happens, you see the, a row of the fairies and they're taking off their makeup. And they look around and they're like, oh, you guys were brutal. And the one's got a big black eye. And... <laughs> And, and then they take down some more of the scenery in the set, and the, the Rizalka's over there, and she's all beat up. And then as Miramis and Fenris are just sitting in their chairs with big stars on the back of them laughing, and Randy just looks at you, she's like, you guys did such a good job, man. It was it was amazing. That was pretty good. The Mimic, huh? How was that? <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was, yeah, is the diamond real? Oh, that? Yeah, you get to keep that. What is it? It's a diamond. It's a diamond. <laughs> Why doesn't it look like any diamond we've ever seen? Because it's been inside of an ancient fae mimic for like 10,000 years. How heavy is this diamond? It, yeah, I mean, how do we get this? It's the size of your fist, so it's like two, three pounds. Yeah. Yeah, how did we get this appraised? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. I mean, you do with it what you want when you leave here. Hey, come over to the exit interview. This is one of our favorite parts. And he takes you over to a, 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 a bunch of comfy chairs with a coffee table. He's like, sit down, sit down. And he puts on a bathrobe and some big sunglasses. And he's is like, so. What? Is Jeff around anywhere? Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the fairy dragon. Jeff's right over here. Yeah. And, and he's nodding and he, and he waves and he's like, don't trust the dragon. <laughs> So, so, what was your favorite part? What did you enjoy? I mean, kind of all of it. I was, uh, I, I got, I got to, I got to, am I still a fairy? Fair? No, you are not a fairy anymore. Okay. Yep, you're o yeah. You weren't sure, and then you look, you're like, okay, cool, I'm me. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, no one else has become other stuff in any of the episodes. You did it twice in one. That was, it's a new record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Othi, what about you, man? What'd you like? What was good? Uh, I really like the tower, actually. Yeah, that's fun, huh? And, and you see Fenris and Esmeramis in the back waving, and he's like, I thought of that all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Mav, how's it for you? What's going on? What's going on? I like the Nimic. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it ate Danik. You know, every other group that's gone through here has looked at that well and decided to nope out of there. <laughs> Don't know why. No, we we'll go right in. There's just something really off-putting about a well all by itself in the Fey, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Awesome. So I'll tell you what. You guys are hurt real, real bad. And if I send you back to where you were in this condition, you're going to die. So, <laughs> um, now your sponsors of this special event, um, they've asked that I give you eight more hours to take a rest. So, if you'd like to do that, and then I'll send you back to right to where we snatched you up from. How's that, that sound? Be great. Cool. Very can cool. We, can we, uh, can we, um, get our hands on any potions before we go back? Oh, no, I'm sorry, man. We we don't supply that, but you did win the prize. I mean, they're out there. You could have found some in certain places, but, you know, it's you didn't really go towards any of them. The Badgers have a stockpile, but most people just go there to get out. <laughs> um, so he's like, he passes you this, and when he passes you in its form, it's in a short sword form. He's like... Do you guys know any warlocks? Uh, no. No. The one we know is headless. I met this really cool one in Cholt who they could change what their weapon looked like. I thought that was really neat. So we invented this for you. You can transform this weapon into any weapon you want it to be. Right? It's pretty cool. It can't be smaller than a short sword, though, so you can't transform it into some tiny little dagger that can just shove up somebody's nose and pick their brain out. But you could turn it into a big sword. That's cool. And it always does a plus one. And, and this is the best part of it, right? If you hit something that doesn't belong on your plane of existence, it needs to make a saving throw if you critically hit it or be banished back to its own home plane. Right? Am I telling you? What am I telling you? This is a great weapon. It's totally cool. So here, this is for you. Yep, your sponsors wanted me to make sure you got that. And then if you'd like to take your rest, I'll take you back to where you were. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys got any closing questions before we, like, send you off to Night Nightsville? I don't know. All right, yeah. cool. Um, he, he reaches into his robe and he pulls out these three big blueberries. And he's like, hey, go ahead, eat one of these, you'll pass out, and then you'll wake up fully rested where you were. Does the, does the weapon have to be attuned? It is an attunement item, yeah. Okay. yeah. Who's going to take it? I think it's probably you or me, right? Just an FYI, guys. Yeah. An yeah. item that was 2 inches by 1.8 inches by 1 inch uh, is worth 51 million UN. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Crazy! So we're gonna hide that stone. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get more opportunities to crit something. You do, so. You do. You can make it into a glaive. Yep. Yeah, I could. I could just make it into my my glaive, and then I'd have an extra glaive. So I don't know. Do you have? Do you need? Any weapon like I'm rocking right now, or probably not? No. Okay. Oh, 16 blades on the back. Right now. Walking porcupine. Yep. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take it then. Yeah, go for it. All right, so you guys take the berry. Are you eating the berry he gave you? Yes. All right, as you're eating the berry, he's like, all right, I'll see you guys. Well, probably not. Um... And as you're starting to fall asleep, you swear you watch yourselves walk into the room with Count Marlamir, King Gabriel, and St. Cain. They're having a discussion, and you pass out. What? And when you open up your eyes, it feels only like a second later, there's Achilles roaring about how he's going to burn you all to death. And that's where I'll leave you. Dude. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Good times.
<laughs> yep. Pretty much. That's Othig now. I don't know. That is him. <laughs>